What's up guys? It's yo boy Omni Sensei. Welcome to What If I Was Reborn As Goku. Ascending to Godhood. Finale. Like, share, and comment on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Also, remember to check out the original story. Link in the description. With all that out of the way, enjoy. The fight was raging on in full intensity when Android 21 joined the fray. She was stronger than Cell, many folds and started to pummel onto Kale. However, like the person before her, she couldn't defeat her and only got her angrier. How much potential does this Saiyan have? Does she have more than me? Her power just keeps increasing, with only rage as her fuel source. Both Cell and Android 21 have tried many times to absorb her as it was the only thing that seemed would stop her. But it seemed as if she had enough instinct to dodge and recognize that she would lose if was hit by those types of moves. The only real thing they could do at this point was to suppress Kale with their power, but that wouldn't last long. Cell broke off from the engagement, leaving 21 to fight for herself so that he could take a breather. That was when he remembers that he had extra comrades that could help him. Android 17 and 18. Stop loitering around and watching us fight. Get down here and help us. Both siblings furrowed their brows. They might have been comrades mere moments before, but that was only for killing number 20. Quite frankly, they didn't like the tone that was being projected to them. Throughout the entire time I have been with you, you gloated about how perfect and strong you are. Surely you do not need our help. Are you sure? 17. The pitiful man seems to be struggling against the girl. Even with his master on his side, he still can't win. Maybe you aren't as strong as you say. They have shown the side that they were on. Pure neutral machines. Cell glowered at the two individuals and was about to spout something harshly at them to get them in line. Maybe a quick beating would do the trick. Cell walked behind 17 before he could react. They didn't actually think he would attack them. A straight chop was heading towards 17's neck, one with enough power that might decapitate him. Another hand stopped this approach by the wrist. He couldn't pull away. So he looked at the perpetrator, angrier than ever at how powerless he's been feeling. What was the point in power if he couldn't even kill a bunch of weaklings? His heart sank when he saw who it was. It was Goku. He was already in his Super Saiyan form to boot. Android 17 and 18 backed up when their reaction caught up and saw the exchange between the two fighters. Goku punched Cell back down to the ground from the rock pillar and he crashed into the dirt. Cell, now he is in his perfect form. I won't say thank you, whoever you are. Cell, since you saved us from those tubes and now tried to kill us, I would say we are even. All bridges are now burnt. Android 17 thanked Goku before returning his attention to Cell. From neutral to resentful were the android's attitude to Cell. 18 silently agreed by brushing her hair to the side and nodding at the statement. The androids are now out. Well, it wasn't that hard to convert them to our team. Now how did Kale's transformation get triggered? Goku looked over at the pile of dirt that was being thrown around and saw Kale actually looking exhausted by herself. He heaved a sigh of relief that she hadn't transformed into a Super Saiyan yet. If she did, he didn't know if he could stop her. Looking at the other end of the dirt cloud, he had to rub his eyes once or twice or thrice to fully believe who she was fighting. Looking as tired and roughed up as Kale, her pants and small parts of her bra were torn able to see the skin underneath. Android 21. But how? What did I miss in just one day? Target has disappeared. Relocating Kai Signature Kai. Signature match approximately north. Android 16 activated his boosters on his feet to accelerate his flight and was about to take off. Oh no, you don't. Gohan came flying in with a roundhouse kick aimed at the tall man's head. He easily blocks it with his hand and his eyes slowly trained on the young boy. Don't forget about me. 16 in fact did forget about her. 
Using all of her body, she tackled 16 in the stomach. 16 skidded back a few feet with his feet creating a line on the floor. He eventually stopped and didn't look phased. He grabbed that Saiyan with his other hand, and he threw both of them to the ground. Their heads collided in a clumsy fashion sprouting huge bumps. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Bula, why is your head so hard? Maybe it's because of all those books you read. You dunderhead. Your head is strong because you would be stupid enough to put weights on it and train your forehead like that. Android 16 cracked a small smile at the little exchange the kids had with each other. He didn't have time to enjoy himself. Mother would be mad he didn't finish his mission. Flying up once again, he was about to take off. They both saw he was about to depart and without any words, rose to stop him. Buller jumped towards once again, but this time had two little cup-like Kai structures on her feet. Kamehameha Govan launched a Kamehameha not at Android 16, but at Buller. The waves of Kai, when close to Buller's feet, split off into two, and started to propel Buller to unimaginable speeds. She was safe from the powerful attack with her own Kai structures, acting like rocket thrusters. This time, 16 didn't just move a few feet, but crashed into a sanctuary wall when Buller's rock-hard head impacted his stomach. Ah, I hate doing that. Next time, it will be your turn. It will probably hurt them more with your harder head. Android 16 got up and started an analysis of the two children. Both of them, nine-year-old Saiyan bodies with that much power. With him staring at the two so much, Gohan thought it was him being confused at their amazing plan. You shouldn't underestimate us, mister. Us working together isn't just simple multiplication or addition. It is much more. Such coordination is on par with the Android 17 and 18 pair. Coupled with their power at such a young age, they were a real threat. Maybe even more than Goku himself. New objective. Eliminate Saiyan kids. Instead of wanting to head off to Goku, this mission was the priority in his mind. Tin Can is finally ready to fight us. Let's show him our one year worth of hard work, Gohan. Yeah, Goku. You seem to nearly ruin all my plans whenever I see your ugly mug. You also seem stronger than before. What did you do? You know what? It doesn't matter. I will destroy you from the humiliation from before. Prepare yourself. Cell. Hearing the shriek from his master had him jump out of his skin. Now is not the time for that. Get this monkey off of me. At the fight between the two female powerhouses, it wasn't looking so hot for the pink one. With an upper hand at first, it was slowly and brutally lessened until Kale started landing real dirty hits, creating large bruises and cuts. Cell looked between the new arrival and the muscular giant, and an ingenious plan started to form in his mind. There was only one way with defeating Kale at this point, and it wasn't with force. Looking around the battlefield, he finally spotted the situation that triggered her transformation. He slapped Krillin on the back to get his eyes off of the female sweating bodies as they fought. Wake up sends a delivery. What are you slacking off for? Don't you have a model girlfriend or something? Those two over there need Senzu beans. I know you have some, and I don't want to use mine. Ho! Oh, that hurt. You got to appreciate all the body types. Not like someone like you would know about. Krillin grumbled and headed towards his fallen comrades, and gave them a Senzu bean. Now that that is taken care of, what dash what next? A fist to the face apparently. Kale's huge fist caved in Goku's face, forcing him to fly off in the distance. Ha huh, ha! Huh. I told it would work. What did I say? Master. Now let's wait for all of them to fight and tire out and gobble them all up. She was glad that the brute was off her back, but she had a feeling that they shouldn't linger more than necessary. Retreating and gathering more power seemed like the play. What? But master this is the perfect op dash shut up cell and do what I say. Let's go. Without him waiting to respond, she left as quickly as she could. One could tell how badly battered she was by how her flight started and her aura was weak. Cell looked disgruntled being told against his will so harshly. He looked at Goku one last time with hatred, and then fled to follow his master. Goku flew a kilometer before he stopped himself. Kale was going on a rampage trying to take a bite out of everyone she saw. 17, 18, Chen, and Yamcha were fighting her, and stood no chance with how they were going down like flies. Sire, why do I have to do everything? Wait, I am the protagonist. Man, being the protagonist is hard. With that, he flew back to the battle. What everyone fails to understand, understandably, is that the way to defeat Kale is not to keep fighting her, 
but to placid her. He had a perfect way. But first, hey big, fat, and ugly. Over here, he had to provoke her. What? Kale was eating them alive right now. He needed to distract her. And the mission was accomplished when Kale turned her head to look at the aggressor. Just in the nick of time too because it looked like she was going to lodge her fist inside Chen's stomach. Ah, such an obvious charge didn't make it any less deadly. Goku dodged and weaved around the mindless brute waiting for Krillin. Unlike the ones before him who tried to fight her, he put all of his focus on dodging. With his intensive training with Spirit and Kai, moving efficiently with no redundant movement was an afterthought. Here you go, eat up. Krillin force-fed the two down Saiyans, tossing the beans in their mouths. It didn't take long for them to wake up from their nap. Oh, what happened? Where am I? Caulifla woke up first with Vegeta close behind. The ground was still shaking from Kale decimating the earth and rocks around her. These shakes woke the two from their groggy state and forced them to look over in that direction. Holy crap. Who is that? So muscular and what is this Kai? Destructive and dangerous. A new enemy. No, wait. That is not a new enemy. Well, kinder. That is Kale. She turned all crazy and mad after you guys got your asses handed to you. It didn't take long for them both to give Krillin a death stare that could rival Chichi's. Sheesh, these Saiyans and their pride. By the way, Caulifla, Goku wanted me to tell you to help him out. I don't know how you can, but he said so. Me? Okay. Caulifla flew out to meet Goku while Vegeta was pondering in his head. Why not me? Your teamwork was impeccable. However, that is not enough. Gohan and Buller were looking worse for wear. They have been going at it full force for minutes. But 16 didn't look tired at all. Well, makes sense since he is an android. We are not done yet. Both of them ran up. He put up his hands and tried to grab their small hands as they went up. When he felt the skin on his left hand, it felt right. All part of his calculations. But when he didn't feel the skin on his right hand, it caught him off guard a little. Off balance when the symmetrical attack didn't get blocked by the symmetrical counter. Gohan actually double backed by releasing a small burst of Kai from his hand propelling him away. Using this momentum, he launched an incredibly high speed kick on 16's hips to force him off balance. Once off his balance, Buller used the grip 16 had on her hand like a monkey bar and flipped up towards him to kick him on the chin. This made 16 loosen his grip and stumble back. Gohan didn't lose his chance and made a Kai rope, much like the one he uses for his tornado, and tied his feet together. Sixteen fell over with a big metal clunk. Doubling down, Buller launched her own rope and tied his torso together, trapping his arms. Sixteen as usual didn't have any emotions as this was taking place. Remaining in the fixed position, the rocket below his feet helped him stand up to face the two Saiyans who were still holding out their hands to keep the ropes stabilized. The two of you have amazing teamwork, but there is one major flaw in all of it. You do not have enough firepower. There is no point in the ability to work together if you do not come out on top. Android 16 started to tense his appendages, straining the ropes restraining him. He started to stretch them making Gohan and Buller rapidly lose Kai, just to hold on for another second. What does this guy eat for breakfast? Probably nails and stuff. With no milk. With no milk. No wonder. If you two are done joking around, let's end this. Behind 16 was another that they have all forgotten was on the lookout with him. Piccolo was up with no bruises or anything of the like as he was before. Next to him was Deng cowering behind him. He presumably healed him to help with the situation. Piccolo looked like he was nearly finished with his signature move, the special beam cannon. 16 saw the spike in Kai previously but did not worry about it, since Piccolo's power of before couldn't damage him too much. You probably think I am the same as before you garbage can. Let me tell you, organic organisms, especially the ones of Namkians, isn't one to look down upon. Piccolo's Kai shot up tenfold when the special beam cannon was complete. Such a big miscalculation forced 16 to do a sweep in the vicinity to see the anomaly. What he noticed was that there were four Kai signatures. Weren't there five before? If the kid's firepower is still lacking, let me be their replacement for now. Special Beam Cannon. The swirly beam of power dashed its way straight towards 16's stomach. It pierced right through gutting the android spilling metallic parts everywhere. Buller and Gohan released their ropes and started to pant heavily. If 16 survived this, there is no way that they would win. Mission failed. We'll get him next time. 16's eyelids closed. 
and even his voice had the robotic shutdown effect. Only one thing would suffice as a celebration. Bump. The two gave each other a fist bump. A fist bump of victory. Kale, calm down. It's me. Your friendly neighborhood Saiyan. Goku was still playing a dodging game with Kale that getting quite boring. Straightforward moves were easy to dodge and predict. Sensing another Kai signature, and one who he was familiar with approaching him, he could finally put an end to her rampage. Over here Caulifla. Goku stretched out his hands and let out a burst of Kai. This Kai wasn't strong, but blanketed everything before him pushing Kale back a little bit to give him some space. He did this just as Caulifla landed next to him to help him out in any way possible. Should I turn Super Saiyan like him? Would he be surprised? With two Super Saiyans, we could cal her thoughts were interrupted when Kale lurched forward as angry as could be going towards Goku. Her tunnel vision didn't even register Caulifla there. Goku grabbed Caulifla off of her feet by hips and held her like an animal. Shoving Caulifla in front of him, her face stopped Kale's fist that was about to cave her in. Mere inches away from death, Goku took a little peek from behind her, and the instant he did so, the other fist went past Caulifla to hit Goku. He hid behind his shield once more and decided peeking wasn't such a great idea. HH. It was as if punching Caulifla was virtually impossible as Kale desperately tried to get past her and punch the guy behind her. Kale, calm down a bit and let's talk. Her voice resonated in Kale's mind a little bit making her a little more sane. But it didn't go all the way. She kept swinging wildly. You wouldn't want to hurt this pretty face, would you? Goku capitalized on her crush on Caulifla and did a little jab. Everyone knew that Kale liked Caulifla except for Caulifla herself, of course. E-S-S-T. Smile. Sell it. Caulifla rolled her eyes and forced a smile. This seemed to calm her more, and her movements started to get more sluggish. Now, hit her with it, Caulifla. Finish her. Say you love her. What? Why would I say that? I uh, like you. Just say it. Like you would a friend or sister or something. Caulifla was flustered that she had to do something like that to her longtime bestie. But she trusted Goku. Goku knows best after all. Here it goes. I, I love you, K. Kale. Super effective. Critical hit. Lightning struck Kale's mind, and her muscles started to shrink. Getting smaller and smaller, she ripped clothes that stretched didn't seem like they would fit her anymore. After reverting back to her old form, she started to walk as if she was dizzy, until she fell down eating a fistful of dirt. Who knew this monster's weakness was an arrow from Cupid? Everyone. Everyone did. Kale. Caulifla went up to the down Kale and picked her up. Checking her breathing, she was indeed still alive. She let out a small sigh of relief at the intense situation. Kakarot, we have to bring her back to check if she is okay. Sure, go to Bomber before me. I'll check the situation here. Caulifla nodded her head and flared her aura up and flew away. Such a crazy situation that no one knew what to do with making her nervous for Kale's well-being. Goku flew over to where the other Zed fighters were to get an update on the situation. Vegeta already left when he saw Kale transforming back while the androids were just off to the side, brushing the dirt that they accumulated during the short fight. Yeah, so this happened after getting the information from Krillin. He really thought about the situation. It makes more sense that it was Android 21 was the culprit that matched the description. I should have known honestly. From the account of what Krillin got from Caulifla, the people were still alive and were being continuously robbed of their Kai. That's probably what that machine was. The other Zed fighters saw that they had nothing more to do started leaving one by one. Goku was also about to leave and check how the kids were but the androids stopped them. Yeah. I feel way too slimy and grimy. Ah, uh, sure. Just go to Capsule Corporation and tell them that Goku sent you. Bomber should have some good clothes. Thanks. With that, they dashed off to Capsule Core headquarters. Such a weird and unusual encounter. Goku put two fingers on his forehead. When he felt the two kids as vibrant as ever, he smiled and whispered away. You two kids got more powerful than ever. Ah, Uncle Piccolo. Piccolo fell down on one knee panting with sweat dripping down continuously. Two ran up to him to see what was wrong. It's alright, I just fused with Kami. Using so much Kai drained my body a bit. I'll be fine in a little bit. You were amazing Uncle Piccolo. The way you dramatically started talking even though it was entirely unnecessary was amazing too. You, dash yeah. 
you were like Namkians shouldn't be looked down upon, and stuff. It was super cool with the drool from your mouth. Are we what? Piccolo put his hand where his mouth was, but he didn't feel anything. Just before he was about to explode, Goku popped out of nowhere. Sup? How's it going? The two kids instantly ran behind Goku for protection against the big bad wolf. Piccolo cooled his anger for now, but vowed to get those rascals at a later date. Whoa, you did a number on 16. Hey Piccolo, did you help? Last time I saw you were passed out like you had a blackout. It was quite sad honestly, ah, you Saiyans drive me crazy. Let's go Dend, these Saiyans can handle themselves. Piccolo stormed out of the hallway with Dend hurrying behind him. He didn't forget to say goodbye to his friends before he left. What should we do with that guy? Bull appointed at the down 16, with a medium-sized hole drilled in his stomach. Hum, honestly I am surprised you won leaving him in such good condition to boot. Let's carry him to the house. Maybe even fix him up. Fix him up? But why? He was so mean. Oh, you should have noticed too, Gohan. He isn't mean. I guess Goku assumed what happened in the game is also happening here. Android 16 was reprogrammed to help 21, but instead of helping her control her evil side, she was already corrupted before 16 was reprogrammed making it. So that 16's purpose is to just help her. With Bulma's help, they can probably return him back to his old self. Do we have to carry him? Can't we use instant teleportation? It's so much better. Oh, just hush, we can't use instant transmission when coming back to see your mothers. Let's just go through the front door. Come on, pick him up. Let's go. Oh, this is going to do a number on my hair. Not like it was good to start with. Stupid. 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 This wasn't supposed to turn out like this. Everything isn't going how it's supposed to be. 21 punched the metal wall that surrounded her and cell. Her fist buried inches deep in the metal wall finding dirt on the other side. She was still in her pink transformed state. Her eyes read near insanity from the situation that unfolded. You, what happened back there? You didn't tell me there was going to be a monster like her as one of our opponents. She kept in getting more powerful with no end in sight. Too many things are happening that is not in the timeline. Goku isn't supposed to be this powerful. And to top it off he's supposed to be an idiot. There are new Saiyans everywhere that are too powerful. What is happening? 21 wasn't paying attention at all to the voice behind her too engulfed in talking to herself crazily. He even has a harem swimming with babies. Maybe having more people equal higher competence and power. Dash hey, Cell was fed up with this crazy woman and her antics. He grabbed her shoulder to get her attention and assert his dominance. The millisecond that his finger touched her shoulder, she turned in Cell's direction and started to lift him up by the neck. He still had no chance against the overwhelming power that he once again felt since the first time he met her. He started to choke with no air, and his eyes turned red as he looked down at the girl. Don't you forget who is in charge here, Cell. Don't think that I didn't notice you looking a little too free from my chains during that fight back there. Maybe I have been too easy on you. 21 threw Cell on the wall of the lab where he crashed and created a small dent. He had an angry look on his face, but quickly had it disappear when 21 looked over in his direction. Let's stay here a while and recoup our strength. We will figure out a plan later. 21 started walking away to her bedroom while thinking to herself. Stronger or not, I will have my way this time. Mark my words, Goku. Honeys, I am home. Goku burst through the door of the Capsule Corporation building, expecting a warm welcome. However, there was dead silence, bringing Goku's mood down a bit. Both of his kids were panting behind him. The lack of Kai due to their fight, plus carrying the giant hunk of man, really got them tired out. We are down here. Bomber's voice echoed across the house entering the ears of the new people. They navigated around the house before they entered the laboratory. In the middle, Kale was getting scanned with various machines hooked up to her. Bomber was reading something on the screen, while Caulifla was nervously biting her nails. The androids were also there for some reason. They were cleaned and had a new set of clothes each. Bomber lent some of her clothes to 18 and some of Goku's to 17. They would be lying to themselves if they said they weren't curious about Kale's special condition. Blending in the background, they didn't bother anyone and kept to themselves. How is it going? Her vitals seem to be stable. I don't know what you want me to look at here. She looks completely fine. Yeah. 
But what if she turns all big and scary again? My poor Kale Cauliflower insisted Bulma to keep looking. She rolled her eyes at the Saiyan's persistence and pretended to look busy looking at the same screen. She is okay, probably has a special composition as a Saiyan. We will look at the book later. E, but look at her sleeping peacefully. She is fine. Cauliflower conceded defeat that Kale was fine. On another note, Bulma. I need you to fix this guy up and maybe reprogram him as well. Revealing the kids holding 16 behind him. Bomba who would usually look excited side. What am I to you Saiyans? Always coming to me when you have problems. It's your fault you are the smart one. True Bulla come and move Kale to another spot. Bulla went to where Kale was sleeping and with Kalifla following, went up to her room to lay her down. Go and put 16 on the table to replace her and soon disappeared as well to play with Bulla. Whoa, 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 reprogram him. He isn't an emotionless machine. You can't just do that. The androids were a little uncomfortable at the situation, considering Bomber could technically do that to them as well if Goku wanted to. Don't worry, we are just restoring him back to his old self from what 21 already did. How do you know that? No, he is right. There is some advanced stuff mixed in with some old programming, like two different handwritings. Programming is not my forte so it will take a while. Hum, 16 was pretty nice in the short time that they were together with him. You guys can stay here for a while if you want. We will still be going after 21 and sell after 16 wakes up. I am going to decline for now and stay here with 16 to make sure your wife doesn't do any damage to him. Right, 18. You do what you want, 17. I, on the other hand, saw a hot tub on our way over here. I am going to hit up that for a while. Bomber, is it okay if I borrow some of your clothes and a towel? Sure, sure. Goku, Shichi went to her dad's house, so I'll be picking her up later tonight. We'll join you Cauliflower in bed later. Bomber absent-mindedly said yes. 18 walked towards Goku who was near the exit. Before she left, she winked at the blonde man and brushed her shoulder on his and left the room. Kel woke up with sweat dripping down her forehead. Last night was so crazy that she was wondering if it was all a dream. From what she could remember, she woke up in the middle of the night feeling quite sore. And after getting up to get water, she was whisked by Cauliflower into bed with her and Goku. Her head hurt and she got out of bed earlier than the rest. She went out to the backyard to really think about what happened and what was the next move. I didn't help that she didn't remember anything before that got her into that mess. However, she didn't sneak quietly enough, and someone overheard her walking away. Joining her in the backyard, he leaned against the wall of the compound until she spoke. What happened yesterday? I'm so confused. Yesterday as in last night or during the day? Because if you want I can go into detail about last night no. I meant during the day. My memory is so foggy. Well, from what I heard, you kinder went basic when you saw Quilfla and Vegeta fall. Not only did you push Cell and 21 back, but you also had them running for their lives. You even attacked some of the others during it as well, including me. Oh, sorry. Goku wanted to tease her more, but he could tell she is really distressed and confused. Don't worry about it. If you really want to apologize to someone, buy 18 some new clothes or something. If you don't in a couple of hours, don't blame me if some of your stuff goes missing. Hair. There was a comfortable silence after that. The most comfortable that the two ever had. They never really talked together by themselves. Usually one of the girls or kids was also in the room with them making it less awkward. While they bonded with everyone else in the house, they themselves never really bonded until last night that is. After a while, Goku broke the silence and started talking about random stuff. It went from small talk to talking about one thing that they had in common. You knew I had a crush on Cauliflower, and you basically told everyone when you told Cauliflower to say that. Oh, please, everyone knew you had a crush on her. You weren't really hiding it well. Quilfla was a nice topic to dangle on until they circled back to her enraged rampage. What do you think this is? I, I don't feel normal. I'm pretty sure I know what you are going through. Uh, just a hunch. Don't scream when you find out, okay? Such a nice talk came to an end when Goku brought out the thick Saiyan book. It was a great tool for literally the entire Saiyan population besides himself. The Saiyan book. What about it? I already read the important bits. You read the bits that you thought were important. Look over here, on the last chapter. Kel leaned in where it was talking about other transformations. 
Goku delved deeper into the chapter and pointed at the particular special case that he was looking for. Legendary Super Saiyan read that. She had an extreme foreboding sensation swell up inside her chest. Gulping down a swab of saliva, she read in the depth all that the dragon Shenron knew about the legendary Super Saiyan. Much is unknown about the legendary Super Saiyan. But one noticeable thing about this Saiyan is its uncontrollable rage. And legendary potential just the introduction got her hooked. The more she read the more she understood of herself. And what she was going to become. Ah, uh, are you saying that I am a legendary Super Saiyan? But that would mean no I, I can't be. Kel started to hyperventilate. Goku patted her back and told her to calm down. Hey Dingus, I told you not you freak out. Calm down, and let me tell you how you can overcome your own genes. It took a while indeed, but she eventually calmed down and turned quiet. Goku, the most capable person she has ever met even more than Cauliflower, told her that there is a way. She had to listen. Well, the information in the book is murky at best, only bits and pieces from thousands of years ago. It is stating what is known, and even that may not be true. The first way and guaranteed way to fix your special body is to wish for something from Shenron. From what I heard, Dandan Kami upgraded him so it should work. The other way is to walk the path not trekked and be the first to control it. The book says uncontrollable. Just because no one has controlled it before doesn't mean it is uncontrollable. You will eventually implode with endless power and die. Maybe those before you just didn't have a strong enough body. Either way, it is your choice. My choice, it's a choice of life or struggling to survive. What would Caulifla say to do? Kel whispered to herself while thinking about it. Probably something like train. Don't be a coward. You can overcome it, Kel. I believe in you. Shem PH. I can't rise to an expectation like that. Goku chuckled a bit at Kale, even with a life or death choice before her, still thinks about Cauliflower. Maybe you don't know Cauliflower after all. What? Or maybe you don't understand how important you are to her. Do you really think she will throw Saiyan pride bullshit at you like Vegeta? She cares a lot about you. She would probably tell you to do it at first. But if it doesn't work out, she might even do the wish for you. This got Kale thinking, does Cauliflower care that much about me? Don't think about Cauliflower for one second. What do you want to do? Well, Goku smiled. She was actually considering her choices more in depth. He could tell that Cauliflower wasn't as big of a factor in her decision just from the constant mumbling. You, you didn't have a clear path ahead of you, did you? You might have had the book, but that was like a saying there is a heaven, not how to get there. You basically achieved Super Saiyan by yourself, and now are teaching us. I, I dash, she's gone quiet once again, walking down the path blind while leaving torches behind for everyone else. Truly, if he didn't know anything about DBZ, he would be fumbling about just how to survive being a monkey boy. Well, she will believe what she wants to. What she doesn't know about won't harm her. I will. I will do this myself. I won't cower and control my rage. And I will be the first and help the people after learn too. Yes. The look of determination on her face was classified as cute and fierce. Maybe it will. Just maybe. Alright. I think first you need to learn to control your ape form. That is a step in the right direction. You know Goku, you are a lot better and cooler than I thought. Ah, thanks, Goku. Their special moment got interrupted by Bulma's voice coming down from the lab. In it had a mix of excitement that was signature whenever something tech happened. 16's programming is done. I can wake him up now if you want. Bomber told Goku and Kale as they entered the lab. Bomber woke up just to come straight down here and see how that decoding was coming along. It actually went smoother than she thought, and she was able to revert 16 back to how he was before, excluding the initiative to kill Goku of course. Yeah, let's boot him up, and maybe we can get some information on Cell and 21. Sure, wake him up without my permission and without 18 being here. The sarcastic voice in the corner reminded him that 17 was here all night. Such an overprotective dad. Kale, can you get 18 over here? She should be in one of the spare rooms, sleeping in a bed like a normal person. Did I just hear you correctly? 17 looked at Goku with dead eyes as usual, while Goku didn't even turn in his direction. Tell her we are about to turn on 16. Are you all ready? The lab was fairly spacious with 17, 18, Goku, and Bomber surrounding 16. Kale, after sending 18 downstairs, 
went to talk to Cauliflower about her future, after finding out she woke up. This better be good to warrant 16's reprogramming. Oh shut your complaining 17. Bulma said that 21 did something to her. I trust her. You are getting too comfortable with the people here 18, it's concerning. You are just jealous that I've made new friends while all you have done is been sleeping in the basement. ESK. Let's get this over with. Alright. Let's do this. Bulma was more than ready to see the product of her own work. After pressing the button that initiates the program, she stepped back to give Sixteen some room. After a few moments, Sixteen eyes opened violently. Streams of data were scrolling through his eyes, as if they were one of the few monitors in the lab. An extended amount of text went by before it came to a stop, and Android 16 was fully rebooted. Awake with a new brain in the metaphorical sense, he sat up and looked around. Computing accessing memory establishing initiative. Hello, Goku, Bulma, Android 17, Android 18. It seems as if you reprogram me. I do not hear 21's presence inside my head anymore. Correct Amundo. Goku was hoping that after restoring you to your previous version, that you wouldn't be so hostile to us, and maybe even help us stop 21. Android 16 smiled. It was as if Goku knew how he was before. Indeed, Android 21 added extra code that made me obedient to her. It was unpleasant. But she didn't change me massively. Android 16, we need to find and stop 21 before she does any more harm. You were with her even before she activated 17 and 18. What can you tell us about her? 16 looked at Goku's eyes for a second. Searching. Searching for something within them. No horrible man would be loved by so many. Before I give you the information. I need you to promise something Son Goku. Help me save her. Help you how? I don't know. Ah, this is wonderful. Android 21 was sitting next to another version of the Kai container that Goku sieged in the previous lab. Her tail was in one of the holes that connected to the yellow substance that was Kai. Her power was increasing steadily her base limit higher than ever before. That was enough for now. If I take too much food, the batteries will die before they can recharge. Such cruelty to those poor humans. Using them just for power, you are the same as you were back then. Shut up your thoughts are inconsequential. You should just disappear for good and get out of my head. I will never leave. Although you have all the power right now, I will find a way out eventually. You will never escape the insides of my mind. That is where you will live forever, and it is your fault for being too weak. On the outside, it just looked like Android 21 was closing her eyes thinking in her head, but unveiling the curtains to look inside, we see two 21s looking at each other conversing. One with red pupils and black eyes, similar to the one who sees the rays of the sun, and another with white eyes and blue pupils, one that lives in the shadows. Two sides of her mind split long ago, one good and one evil. Yet although they are both her, one holds all the power. The good 21 didn't speak anymore, she had nothing more to say. Of course, she wouldn't seek power at the expenditure of other living beings. She wasn't a monster. But because of it, she released a monster to harm everyone anyway. 21's eyes opened because of a sound from the room over. The big clank could wake up anyone within a mile radius. Luckily, no one was nearby. Looking over, Cell was messing with a strange device. Standing on five legs, it looked like a virus with how it was shaped. Clear glass on top with a seat inside. The machine was finished off with multiple rockets on the sides of it. What are you doing? Don't touch that. What? You seem awfully protective and emphasize its importance. Yet we don't use it. What is it? Cell was getting bored and quite irritated. Hold up inside of this godforsaken base wasn't fit for such a superior being such as himself. 21's eyes glowed with anger at the sight of Cell touching that machine. It's the source of all my information. How I got here and if I need to leave. You are saying Android 21 is from the future. Everyone was shocked by what they were hearing. Even Goku. E, but how is that possible time travel should theoretically be impossible. Bomber maddened with the idea of such lucrative technology. Denied all claims. I am model after her son. So she did not hold back in letting loose her feelings and venting her frustrations. She said it didn't matter anyway because, by the time anyone figured out, it wouldn't be of use. Tell us more. Anything useful she let out to you. She said she has another side to her. 
a weaker side that is on the verge of breaking out, especially after what she experiences in the future. She retold the story of how they had everyone beat her, even her other self sided with the opposition. However, before they can finish it, she completed her side project after stealing Bulma's notes and escaped with a time machine that she capsuled. Strangely enough, forces of the world recombined the two 21s before the departure, trapping the other 21 inside the current one. So you are saying that there are two 21s, and you want us to free the good one? Yes. That's right you bitch. You ain't smarter than me. You stole my notes. I was the one who had the blueprints for a time machine. But you don't know how to do it. Yes. Interesting. My biggest question was, why didn't the future us send reinforcements? They as per usual ignored Bulma and her happiness. Asking to separate the 21s is a huge task. Even if Goku learned the four spirit fission from Yardrat, that was to separate two beings. He didn't know how it would work with two entities that were originally one and the same. Anyways the crux of the matter is the longer we wait, the stronger they get. I have a plan and the power to defeat them. But I don't know how long that will last with their current increase in power. 16. Do you know where they are? Affirmative, they are in the northern plains at an abandoned RR army lab. Even if they assume the worst and know that I turned on them, they would still need a large amount of time to remove and transport the energy extractor that they use on the humans. We should go now to intercept them. Goku nodded. He put on some fighting gear in a second and was ready to head out. We are coming too. We are. Of course we are. You wouldn't want to miss out on the fun would you? It was decided by Seventeen that they wouldn't want to miss out on the android family reunion. Good thing there were only five, any more would be redundant. Alright, let's go. Sixteen, you are coming too. Wait are you going to take Cauliflower as well? I'm sure she would ready and pumped to use her new power. Or even the kids. Bomber had to intervene at the last second. I would hate to say it, but Cauliflower and the kids aren't powerful enough. The only reason why I don't mind the androids coming is that they would come even if I told them not to. Besides, Kale needs Cauliflower's support right now, and we shouldn't ruin it. Fine, she won't be too happy when you tell her your exact words. She would understand and only want to get stronger. With that, the four figures took off to the sky towards the base that Sixteen indicated. This can't happen like last time. I'll just play it slow and keep gaining power. Cell has been increasingly annoying. Maybe I should get rid of him earlier than planned Ah, It wasn't a sound of pleasure like it was last time. This time, her brain was receiving massive waves of pain originating from an unknown spot. What is happening? Intense ringing, like a bell, echoed throughout her mind. She couldn't think and be forced to kneel down in agony. Cell so ran into the room and watched by the doorway alerted by the sound. This is the sound of my freedom. I have been working on tearing a spot on your wall ever since you came here years ago. And I have finally broken through. You can't contain me anymore. The voice inside her head made her feel crazier than she actually was. Her body was phasing in and out. It was like she was trying to create afterimages in place. Until eventually, two afterimages materialized into physical constructs. And with a boom in the center, launched each other in different directions, embedding their respective walls. Evil 21 was laughing out loud after she inspected her inner body. Virtually no power loss. Even with the power loss, it wasn't dangerous to her, and she would be able to easily get it back after sucking her good counterpart dry. She started talking contemptuously to herself across the aisle as she tried to get out. You've doomed yourself. I couldn't get rid of you when you were in my mind, but now I can eliminate you forever. Such idiocy won't go unpunished. How certain are you that they are in this base? 99.9% .9 certain. Almost at the fabled base of 21 in Cell. They were truly out of nowhere, a deserted desert if you will. We are here. Here. There is no one here. Just more sand that seems to stretch out for an eternity. Are we sure Bomber didn't knock any screws in your head 16? There is nothing here unless it's another underground base. I have only seen this reveal itself once before, but I have the method of activation stored in my memory. Android 16 moved to a certain cactus, one out of many scattered around, while the rest of the team promptly stepped back when he beckoned to, pushing two of its spines with his fingers at the same time, then a third with his foot, 
A few seconds passed until a clicking sound could be heard. Normally, someone without the correct pressure would have the spine pierced through, or the spine would break from the pressure. The cactus hissed and the back part of it opened up and shot a light screen, as if it was a projector. This light scanned the area in front of it a few times before it shot its light slowly revealing a medium-sized structure from its invisibility. The building had a force field-like structure surrounding it, shedding its cyan light dimly on the surroundings. What? Didn't we come from that way? How did we not run into the building? What 18 said was what was on the other two guys' minds as well. From what I know, this force field is the cause of such a phenomenon. It covertly distorts your perception forcing you to go around the building without you noticing. Looks like it even worked on you Goku. Technology from the future is unpredictable. Yeah. That is kinda scary. Whatever, can you disable it? Of course. Next to the projector lens was a small button which 16 pressed. The building was scanned once again, but this time, the force field disappeared from the top to bottom. Hey great, what are you two doing here? Dad, did you really think you could have fun without us? What a big meanie. Goku rolled his eyes as Bulla and Gohan landed next to him. Truly, he instilled the Goku mindset onto the next generation, just as they were flying above the building. However, the glass on the top broke and a figure launched towards two flying Saiyans. They all crashed into each other, but since the lone's figure speed was much higher, they went in that direction and landed on a bunch of cactus. You would think this would hurt more, but we are Saiyans from inside the building. You can hear maniacal laughter. Weak. I expected nothing less. Hum. Wait. Wait what? Rising from inside the lab, a pink figure with white hair levitated above it, shocked at her surroundings. What happened to the force field? How are you outside? Are you what? She didn't really think that throwing her counterpart outside would do anything. At worst, she would slam into the force field, leaving the outside world oblivious to the beating. That is when she saw Goku and the androids and her top blew off. You traitors. I know, wonder. This time I will personally tear you all apart and rebuild you to my own image. I won't let that happen. Rising from the dust of where she was launched from the lab, Good 21 stood up. We were badly beaten up in no condition to fight, but the determination and will to fight never left her eyes. The good version of 21. Well, that was easy. Don't worry. Uh, 21, I will take care of her. Normal Super Saiyan wasn't enough. That much was evident from when Evil 21 fought Kale. He needed one step further. Luckily, he was one step further. H H H H. Powering up his Super Saiyan transformation to the max, his hair started to stand on end as if it was shocked from the inside out. If you took into account the lighting surrounding him, you can say he ascended into a true Super Saiyan. 100 times stronger than his base form, he launched towards 21 in the air. You think that I don't have anything more? Rolling her sleeve in the literal sense, there was a little control panel there. Pressing a few buttons, a signal was transferred invisibly. Android 17 and 18's eyes light up red without their doing, and their bodies launched up to meet Goku. At the combo attack of the two androids, he had to back off unsure how to proceed. He didn't want to damage them until he figured out what was going on. After landing, the two androids flew up beside 21. Shem PH, it seems you removed my programming inside 16 or I would have overwritten him as well. No matter, Cell should be powerful enough. Cell, as if waiting for his signal, Cell burst through the front door at top speed, surprising 16 who was in his path. Goku who saw Cell and was able to react in time, was stopped in his tracks to helping 16, when a pair of kicks was about to smash into his face. He didn't have time to appreciate the shoes, and had to narrowly dodge them and the other set that was behind him that he sensed. 17, 18, snap out of it. I thought you hated her. This is quite interesting. My mind thinks freely, but only my body is controlled. Yeah, such a surreal experience. And it's not like we hate her. We only choose the side who is going to win. It seems like you aren't in a favorable position. How can you know my position if you don't know all my cards yet? The two androids kept their coordinated assault even when talking to Goku. I, I, have to help her. The good 21 tried to stand up, but her injuries were too great, and she fell back down on one knee. Now where did we leave off? Goku looked over to the side helplessly. He had to power through the androids and potentially do serious damage in hopes that they would get repaired by Bulma. 
What Goku knew however was that when unable to control their body and controlled by another person, they might keep fighting until they are dead. I can't wait to break you. 21 have me the go ahead, but honestly, even if she didn't, I would have anyway. I never liked you and your robotic nature. I wonder, even still, do you scream for mercy? I have diagnosed you as a psychopath. However, you probably already knew that. Meanwhile, 16 and Cell were having an interesting conversation. Wait the kids. Weren't they with 21? They could try what I taught them, but I don't know if they are going to be able to do it. Wait, where are they? Goku looked over to where all three of them crashed. He didn't see a sight of his kids in the carnage. A little too late, the ground underneath where the androids and Goku were fighting shook. The ground broke underneath them and coming out of it like moles were his two kids. Their fist was in the air for an uppercut. Just when he thought they were good for something, it was actually his face that got punched. What was that for? You idiot. That was dad. Oh, oops. He. Dad, it was a mistake. Please don't ground me. The two children uppercut the two males, while 18 just retreated back to stay with 17. They dug all the way there concealing their Kai for the perfect not so perfect surprise attack. Dad, we will stall 17 and 18. We will show them we are the better tag team. Besides, we have been practicing the technique you taught us. We got this. Goku nodded his head, a little proud at those two little brats. Although, the uppercut still stung a bit. Flying over, he launched another fist at the Flying 21. She was annoying, about to decimate her other self was interrupted again. Can't she have some fun and just kill herself or did people had to stop her? You are from the future, correct? You may think you know all my tricks, but I assure you that you will still be surprised. What from your ape form? That form is useless, inferior to even the first Super Saiyan transformation. Just turn into my snack already and let me walk over the corpses of the people on this planet. You already know my answer. Less talk, more of my fist in your face. Android 16 told us something a little special. Not only did you time travel from the future, but you got your ass beaten by future me as well. What do you think would be different this time? I got the most powerful armor on my side. No matter what I do, as if it is fate, you always seem to have some sort of way of foiling my plans. I don't know what past I ventured into, but you will not stop me. I can't be stopped. Not again. Lighting crackled around Goku and his blonde hair as he strapped on in. Super Saiyan 2, or as this universe would call it, true Super Saiyan. During his time in the hyperbolic time chamber, he achieved his transformation with ease. Time to put it to the test. Goku put his hands on the ground mysteriously as the first move. Android 21 rushed in not wanting Goku to finish off whatever he started. Did he think he could bend the ground or something? Her answer came to her when blots of Kai started erupting out of the ground like a volcano spewing lava. Some flew into her path, and it was getting harder and harder to dodge since there was barely any reaction time from when she saw it to it blasting in her face. Finally one hit her, but it wasn't enough to bring her down, only to stop her. When she opened her eyes, it was met with Kai balls all around her person, as if waiting to jump scare her. Peekaboo. Endless amounts of Kai balls gravitated towards her with no escape route in sight. She tried her best to bat them away while going forwards. It was her only option. Unfortunately for her, she batted one into another, and it set off a chain reaction combining into one huge explosion. Just the first interaction, and there has yet to be any actual fighting. It was looking rather one-sided on every battleground so far, but not the side that the Earth wants. You're trash 16, you always have been. Did you really think you could beat me? 16 was trying his best, but he was easily overpowered by the green monster that ate power. When it comes to my power, 1 plus 1 doesn't always equal 2, the power I absorb is much more than that. It is true, quite an easy task for the genetic scientist that was Android 21, with her future knowledge. Of course, that was the same for her as well. Both of 16's hands launched out of his arms aiming towards Cell. Dodge left, dodge bellow, such as predictable patterns. But since Cell was in the spotlight fighting all the time, it gave 16 enough data to fight him. The remaining part of his arm glowed in light at the end. A blast of highly pressured Kai lurched out and created an explosion on Cell's face. He didn't have the firepower to defeat Cell, be he can surely stall. Cell's entire head was deleted from existence with burnt residue on his neck. 
You can already see his cells regenerating as if recovering from a minor cut. Sixteen didn't let up and ran up to him with his arm outstretched. Performing a lariat, Cell fell back into the ground open for more attacks. His two hands flew back towards them, but instead of going back to their owner, they went straight to the down cell with rocket boosters accelerating them. Puncturing a hole as large as the fist were, they opened their hands while inside Cell, and unleashed Hell. Cell's body lit up like a firework from the Kai, and exploded from the overextension. Of course, this wasn't the end as his body started to work faster regenerating from just one lone cell in the air. Gohan and Buller, proud of their coordination and teamwork, clearly have never met Android 16 and 17. They were basically the grown-up versions of themselves, but stronger and unlimited energy to unleash. What's wrong? I thought you Super Saiyan brats were going to put up more of a fight. As the android taunted them more with their monotone voices, it really got into the children's heads. 17 and 18 separated the two, and it was 17 versus Gohan, and 18 versus Bulla. If they weren't winning together, they had less of a chance separate. Gohan took a serious punch in the gut, letting 17 lift his small body up, while Bulla's back cracked from the pressure of 18's kick. Picking them both up, they threw them into each other. Gohan could see 18 coming in with another heavy hitter, while Bulla could see the same with 17. Gohan reacted fast and pushed Bulla up with his hands, while boosting him up in the process. The android's fist crashed into each other, where the children's heads were previously. Not missing this chance, Gohan and Bulla fired Kai way from top and bottom. A Kai battle against androids. That was a battle they could never win. With perfect accuracy, they shot down each and every one with minimal effort, watching each other's back in the process. What? I call bogus. They have to be using an aimbot or something. Well, they are androids. Let's do the new move. Yeah. Was this the new technique they were discussing earlier? Gohan encased himself inside a dense Kai sphere with multiple layers like a hamster in a ball. Two one-way turrets jutted out from the front, and Gohan put his hands in them. Buller did the same as him. But before she was fully encased, she shot out a string of buoyant Kai connecting the two acting as a rope. What the? Creativity. That was something the kids had on them utterly stumping them on their plans. Bulla started to run, and her ball started to rotate. Building so much speed like Arasaka brushing up dirt until finally, she allowed the Kai ball to launch forward. Although it was extremely fast, 18 still was able to dodge it from such a long startup time. As she watched Bulla keep on going on her path, she notices the rope stretching as if it were about to tear. Wait, her head jerked back to where Gohan was, but all she got was a bright ball of Kai rushing at her. Smacked in the face, she fell to the ground from the hard impact. They were far from done. Anchoring herself so she wouldn't get pulled from Gohan's momentum when he landed, she started to circle the two androids. Feeding off of one another's speed and momentum, eventually, their encirclement got insanely fast brewing up the dirt underneath them like a hurricane. Such long practice, they were able to move perfectly in sync with one another. Finally using the turrets that were thought to be a decoration at that point. Gushes of Kai came out hitting the androids on all sides. Even though each blast didn't hurt them that much. There was too many Kai blasts in this Kai storm attack accumulating their damage. They tired constantly to fly out. But the Kai blast was extremely concentrated on the top combined with the dirt everywhere. Forced them to go down. Seems we got a problem back over at the main fight. It wasn't a fight of cat and mouse. Goku, although slightly weaker while in this form, made up for it from his superior Kai tactics and strategies to always keep 21 in a disadvantage. He had just thrown three Destructo Discs, slicing both of her arms and her legs from her torso. He wanted to approach and finish her, but didn't throw caution to the wind. Bombarding her with Kai blasts while he ran up, her body was compiled in a shroud of smoke. Mere inches away from the smoke, this danger sense was going off the charts. Leave. Goku jumped away, but it didn't even matter. A purple hand stretched like there was no tomorrow, and found Goku's neck to hold. The smoke dissipated and revealed a mangled body of 21. Only her hand, which was quickly regenerated if the two other hands on the floor weren't any indication, was purple with strange black triangles on it. Slowly, the purple started to corrupt her pink side shading her in a more evil look. It was having an effect on her sanity, as she looked more crazed than ever. Eventually, her entire body, from head to toe, was replaced from the previous pink to a purple, 
accelerating her power to new heights. Pulling him closer, she licked her lips as if she found juicy prey in front of her in the form of Goku, and pointed her finger from her other hand that regenerated. The separated body parts earlier seemed like it gained sentience of itself, and rummaged with her already. Firing a candy beam, Goku kicked her in the shin, resulting in her misfiring her beam into the sky above. Coating his hand in Kai to form a blade, he sliced the hand strangling him, and retreated back, while 21 winced in pain. He threw the arm that was still clenched on the ground next to him. Finally, this form came out, something worth testing it out on. True heart of a Saiyan, gotta say, I liked you better when you were pink. Hot pink was kinder and the name for a reason. Shut up, shut up, shut up. I am tried of listening to you talk. H H H. Her power was out of control. And you could tell that her sanity was going to leave her the longer she was in this form. Kai blasts were decorating their battlefield like it was raining fire. The fight from over there was affecting the battle more than Goku liked. Fine, fine. I won't let you hear my beautiful voice. But if you are transforming, it would only be fair if I did as well right. Reverting back into his base form he was about to break history once again. What's new? Tensing his muscles, his veins all over his body strained to its limits to keep up with the power that was currently being forced out from within. Despite him being in his base form, the aura around glowed a light yellow as he started this transformation. The air around him started to swell into a dense smoke, masking parts of his body as if they were called to. Releasing a muffled yell into the sky with the sound of a distorted ape. What? It felt good. This transformation was similar to his ape form, hair growing all across his body similar to his tail. Except for this time, the golden aura seeped inside every hair that grew to turn it into deep scarlet color. Each and every one eluded phenomenal power. Lastly, his hair turned into a comfortable mane while his eyes turned yellow. Completing the transformation, a phantom of an enraged ape with golden hair protruded out of him affecting everyone around him. 21. Hit with it at point blank had the golden ape encompass her brain. It rampaged around her mind not helping with her sanity one bit. I didn't want to use this transformation, but such a strong opponent to test my limits. I can already tell I am many times stronger than her, but the transformation will only last 10 minutes tops. That is the penalty of reaching this checkpoint without my body being ready for it. Because of his wish previously allowing him easier control of transformations, he was able to get this transformation even before Super Saiyan 2. However, with his weak body and weak Kai reserves, he could not sustain it for long. The only solution was to get stronger in his base form, to truly capitalize the power in this transformation, and last substantially longer. Android 21 was still holding her head from the passive mental attack that he unleashed, with just transforming into the state. Luckily, his allies were outside the range unaffecting them. Although they were holding their own, 16 stalling cell with his unlimited energy and massive firepower. And Gohan and Bulla bombarding 18 and 17 in their airtight creativity and teamwork, he knew he needed to finish 21 before taking care of their opponents. The good 21 watch from a safe distance. Her heart was in a state of turmoil. All of this doom and destruction was all because of her. At least that was what she thought. If only I was stronger, I could have destroyed her before she got out of control. But I failed twice. She turned to look at Goku, who was standing tall with his back facing her. The sun shone perfectly to make him out to be heaven sent, glistening upon his red fur. What is this timeline? Based on my research, of course, there should be branching timelines. But this is to the extreme. This Goku already is reaching the scope of the Goku I met before, and he is many times younger. What could possibly happen to change this one so much from the one I was just in? Having a time limit on this transformation, Goku vanished into action. He didn't wait for 21 to recover, and appeared before her in an extremely calm manner. Similar to the ape form, this super ape form suppressed his mind to be calm and steady. Unless prompted, that high ceiling won't be broken anytime soon. Grabbing each hand by the wrist, he snapped both of her arms to an irregular position. The snap sounds of bones and intense pain broke the mental lock that she was in, and she found herself back into a position of inferiority. H. H. Even after transforming to my ultimate form, I am still weaker. Still weak at every turn and corner. She looked at Goku with her red eyes in silence. She couldn't move her arms as he was holding onto it. And even with her regeneration factor, 
It couldn't be put to use if he held it in that position forever. Soon she would find out that it will be a long time until she can look at his eyes directly again. Trapping her hands next to her and he put her in a hold. Hugging the life out of her. Her back muscles started to crumble down as her skin got closer and closer to his. If she didn't stop this, her eyes would eventually pop out. So she sent her other appendage that can attack at the moment, and that was her tail. It wasn't one where it could suck the life force of the opposition, but its sharp end could do some serious damage to an unsuspecting victim. Just as it was going to pierce his skin, she felt something soft but strong hold onto her tail. Looking down with great effort, she saw his red tail that intervened. His red tail wrapped around hers and constrained it as well. She felt as if she was being wrung out by a constrictor snake. This is getting old. Let's get of here 18. Yeah, these kids put up quite the fight. Being the machines that they were, they were able to calculate the best escape route even when bombarded with Kai techniques. Their brains worked similarly to each other, so they were in sync. Although it was a good and creative technique with weak firepower, they were never going to win. Go 18. Don't tell me what to do. Even though she said that she still went to start their plan. Their technique resembled a bowler's. A throwing weapon with two balls at the end, with a rope connecting them, usually entrapping others by their legs. Whenever they tried to sever that rope, which was a weak but buoyant string of Kai, they would get bombarded to no end similar to the situation when they would try to go up. This technique was meant for one person, otherwise, how could they prevent them from escaping and protect their cord? 18 dashed up to try her best to get out of the encirclement, and naturally, the two kids both focused their shots upward to stop her. 17 saw the opening and dashed down towards their rope to cut it down. They noticed what they were trying to do, and Gohan switched his firing to 17, alleviating pressure from 18. This, however, didn't alert the two kids but actually made them smile. With each android only dealing with half of the firepower, they were able to use brute strength to get out. 17 was able to barely sever the line when Buller opted to aim at him to ignoring 18. But she was too late. With their line severed the two balls and their momentum started to go in the direction that they were facing, when they were cut at momentous speed. Hey, kids thought they got us. The two went in completely opposite directions and didn't stop anytime soon. Both of the kids still had their hands in the turrets, and both of them shot at 17 who was still in the middle. He smoked and floated up a little leveling with 18, letting the two Kai blasts clash with each other midair. You thought that would get me? No. They both said the line at the same time making 17 confused. If that blast wasn't meant for him, then what was it used for? The two Kai blasts that connected with each other and stayed with each other where they met as they also went back to the spheres at light speed. The two Kais made another rope. It didn't even take a millisecond for this rope to be stretched to its limits, rocketing both spheres towards the center. It didn't end there. The two kids even use a Kamehameha wave to propel them faster. Unable to react to the massive speed both androids got crushed with their backs against each other. Such a huge impact and acceleration. It did incredible damage to the interior and exterior of the androids. Even the kids' multilayered dense Kai spheres started to crack like an egg until finally breaking allow all participants to free fall to the ground. Landing on the ground on their two feet, the androids crashed just a few feet away from them. Nice. Hopefully, we didn't break them. Giving each other a high five, they were given explicit orders not to do too much damage. Since they were fighting against their will, it seems they did the right amount to knock them out but not irreparable injuries. Break them. Think about our situation. We broke our balls merely 30 seconds have passed since he transformed, and 21 already felt like she was going to die. Now Goku could keep squishing her, but with the genes of Majin Buu of the future, she would not die anytime soon. Throwing her in the air, he prepared a Kamehameha of epic proportions. 10x its usual power if you will. After being constrained for so long, 21 felt paralyzed, still unable to move her arms or circulate her Kai. Kamehameha. A blast of Kai, red in color, came barreling towards here. The sheer power of it indicated that it would incinerate her on the spot, leaving no room to revive. As she saw her life flash before her eyes, she was only a teenager for goodness sake. She was too young to die. Her whole body felt like it wasn't hers to control 
and she felt the breeze of the air. Abruptly, that breeze got stronger and turned to wine pelting her face. Opening her eyes, she saw that she was actually flying towards Cell, who had his hand in the air covered in a slight red glow. Telekinesis. Arriving before Cell, she was gently placed down next to him. She could barely speak. T thank you. Cell Herc. She couldn't even speak a single sentence before Cell's tail pierced her stomach. I've never seen this form before. Ha huh, ha. Huh. I can feel so much power. His tail gobbled up giant chunks of her Kai and nearly finished her Kai reserves in a second. Ha ha ha. His power and aura skyrocketed deepening its shade to a dark purple. His overall tone became darker and his eyes that were already wild transformed black with the same yellow pupils. As said before, the energy he absorbed multiplied within itself, leaving the combined Kai reserves bigger than both of them had previously. For the reason why they didn't do this earlier, this is the reason. You are useless to me now. I thank you for your service. However, without you, I would have never been able to reach this level of power. Now be a good animal and keep producing Kai for me to absorb. Cell threw 21 through the hole that was busted by 21 herself into the lab and into the energy containment that housed the other entities that had their power sucked. Goku looked over in the direction of the other battles. The kids were finished with their battle, but looking past them, he saw 16 on the ground roughed up with smoke coming out of somewhere. Kids, take the androids to Bulma. I will finish here. Ah, uh, okay. The battlefield was empty now, ready for Goku to unleash his full strength. Son Goku, I will take my revenge now. After all that humiliation that I was forced to take, I finally have more power than you. Truly, this was inevitable. We know you are a typical supervillain. You don't have to steal literally everything from them from the monologues to the plot. Let's just get this over with. Both of them ran towards each other, the earth shaking from every one of their steps. Goku had a smile on his face as he won the first exchange with a fist cracking Cell's cheek. Now this is the life. Cell he lashed out in retaliation with a quick swipe. Goku grabbed his arm as it passed by and was ready to use it as leverage. He had seen enough of Goku's holds and decided to blast off his arm before he could go any further. Surprised at the quick decision, Cell kicked him in the stomach before he could react. He skids back a little. But he was stopped much to his confusion. He was pushed towards Cell who was ready with a supercharged punch. With a very delicate touch and speed, he pushed Cell's arm to the side. Even though he successfully diverted the punch, the momentum still made him fall to the ground. Rolling on the ground on purpose, he jumped up smoothly making sure not to leave any openings. He looked at who had pushed him, and he saw a small little blue gremlin, looking awfully similar to Cell. He even had the dark and evil effect Cell had after absorbing Evil 21. It didn't take long for him to multiply surrounding Goku on all sides. Just one Cell neared his Cell. He needed to really focus to take these ones out. The first one jumped and the rest followed. The main one stayed back watching but ready to pounce whenever. As the Cell Jr. got into range, Goku launched a sweeping high kick to meet him in the middle. Goku's foot exploded the little guy Madare, and his foot didn't stop in momentum at all. Attacked on all sides, he had no time to rest and meticulously destroyed them one by one. When two got their heads crushed by Goku's large hands, three replaced them. They kept coming, like little blue germs, persistent and unwavering by death. Each Cell Jr. was killed a different way. A back fist was Goku's personal favorite. It was like popping a balloon. Cell saw that although the Cell Jr. were employing different tactics to try and break Goku's defense, they kept on getting launched to their deaths. Changing plans, he started to charge his Kai in a familiar motion. Kami Hami suddenly all the Cell Jr. stopped attacking and backed away jumping. As they jumped, they also put their hands to the side and charge up their Kai. The miraculous blue light that emitted from each source shines brightly in his face. It was like looking at stars in the night sky. Deadly ones. His hand went to the stop between his forehead as quick as he can. But how can Cell let him go that easily? Goku teleported to an outer edge Cell Jr. But the moment he did, all of the cells teleported at the same time keeping Goku in the center. Welp copycats are the worst. Like be a little more original. Spinning in spot at torrential speed. He created his own wind cycle, 
and eventually a tornado. It moved towards the edges before a cell junior before going back to the middle and did it several times. Ha! Huh. All the cells launched their Kamehameha waves at the same time at the tornado. From top to the around him, there was no dead space for Goku to run out of and escape. H H H H. Hearing the scream of his child, Cell looked over to where one of his junior S died unexpectedly. How did he die? He nearly found out for himself when a Kai Bean took a chunk of his hip with it into the beyond. Struggling to keep a hold, he had to wait for his regeneration factor to kick in. What? That Kai, it didn't feel like Goku but one of my own. Looking at the tornado in the middle, that has to be the one causing this. What else can it be? Beams of light went in, and beams of light went out just as deadly aiming randomly. Inside the tornado, Goku wasn't doing much at all. Even that was an understatement. All the tornado did was cover where he was and gave him ample room to dodge. The Kamehamehas that were coming back were merely the product of two beams colliding and bouncing off of each other. Goku may influence some of them, but why use the effort? Stop the count. All of his Cell Jr. has stopped firing. But as seamless as it could be, Goku sent out the rest of the Kai blasted he needed, and destroyed the rest as they were exhausted. Fully healed seconds ago, Cell was ready for a second round. Goku, however, knew better than indulge himself in the fight. I don't have much time left. I need to kill Cell right now. If I don't, I am guaranteed to lose. Mom, where are you? Buller and Gohan barged into the house carrying a broken down 16. He had tried his best and used all his firepower without reserves. But Cell still got the best of him. 18 and 17 followed behind a little slow and reluctantly. It was quite awkward to act like nothing happened. But after Cell absorbed 21, her control over them dwindled enough for the androids to stomp the virus out. Kids, has he broken again? What are you doing to him? Bulma walks out in her casual home clothes stretching after she took a quick nap to rejuvenate herself. Chichi also stepped out with curiosity behind her. Yeah, dad is going up against this super baddie. And he absorbed this other. Wait what? Out of nowhere. Caulifla barged into the living room where they were talking. You said Goku is fighting a bad guy and he hasn't come back yet. Are you talking about those androids? Ah, uh, Gohan looked over at the other two androids, Kinder. I need to go over there and help him. Tell Kale I will be right back. Ah, uh, you can't. Dad told us not to intervene. Shichi chuckled at that respite. Your dad may be incredibly strong, but he doesn't know everything. Go and help them, Bulma, and I will fix 16. Caulifla nodded. It felt like they all had a mental connection knowing what the other was thinking and feeling. A little strange, but Caulifla didn't question it and dashed off. Where has Caulifla gone? Kel came barreling through where Caulifla just came out of. No words were said, only everyone pointing at the open door that was swinging by the force it was open. Wait for me. Ah, Saiyans. Looking over where she felt eyes trained on her, Gohan and Bulla were looking at her with the biggest googly eyes they could muster. Shichi slapped herself while shaking her head. It's like he has infinite energy. Goku has already popped another Senzu bean to keep himself in the fight. Another five minutes thought Goku to himself. The battlefield was a mess with craters and Cell Jr. guts scattered. The more he fought Cell, even though he was beating him, he couldn't defeat him due to his natural abilities. To make matters worse, as they kept on the fight, Cell was getting more and more acclimated with his power gaining a boost in power. I just need one opening. Then I will blast him out of this world. Goku tripped Cell by pulling his ankle forward with his foot. With his other, he kicked him in the back as he fell down. Normally that would cripple or at least stall the other party. But Cell instead uses Goku's leg to balance and shot Kai Blast accurately at his face. Swatting them away, Cell was once again in his face, and they engaged in another slugfest. He needed a change in tactics. Solar Flare, an old trick but works like a charm. Cell staggered back letting Goku push him back with more punches to his chest. Once a significant distance away, he charged his Kai to the side and got ready to fire. Kamaham still blind, Cell also put his hands on his side and powered up. His battle sense was top notch, and he knew this was one of the only ways for him to survive. Ha! Huh. Their two beams met in the middle, 
One blue with yellow golden energy surrounding him. He pumps some of that energy into the Kamehameha, pushing forward his beam more, while also turning his beam redder. Regaining his vision, Cell extracted the Dark Kai he gained into his own Kamehameha, and infused it with his own beam, corrupting its natural blue color with a purpler black. It was met in the middle once again. Goku didn't know what else to do to increase his power. He had to try though. The earth was on the line, stimulating his Kai into the transformative process instead of output. The advantage started going to sell. What's wrong? Feeling a little tired. Don't worry. I will put you into permanent sleep in my belly. Goku's Kai just went up and up, as if in response to that taunt. Veins appeared every, and even his animalistic eyes started to sporadically move around his eye. More. More power. Faint sparks of lighting started to surround Goku. It took an immense amount of effort, and it still seemed so far. But Goku kept pushing for it. Come on. The lighting connected to the ground and circled Goku while still being part of his body. Depleting fast, his Kai reserves were looking dire, to say the least. I, I don't think I can transform again. What else can I do? Maybe another Senzu and try Kamikaze. I have been meaning to go to the other world. This may be my perfect chance. Having trouble Kakarot. Never would have thought the strongest Saiyan would struggle against vermin like him. Vegeta. Flying down creating a triangle with the other two, he had his arms crossed in his signature blue outfit. Goku noticed something different about him since he last saw him. The air around him changed even though he was talking the same. Has he changed this much in only one year? What Goku didn't know was that this change was very recent. Recent as in this day recent. I will help you only because I want revenge on this ugly bastard powering up. Goku was thoroughly surprised when he saw lighting around his character as he turned Super Saiyan, indicating Vegeta's advancement. His level of progress was the same as him or faster even with Goku and his wish. A true prodigy. Vegeta put his hand together in front of him and started charging up Yellowish Kai, with lightning crackling all around. Final flash. Cell couldn't stop his beam now, or Goku's would disintegrate him. Vegeta's didn't look like a weak one, either considering how much his power skyrocketed. Opening his tail large enough, Cell jutted out to Cell Jr., and he quickly leaped into action. With a portion of his strength given to him, Cell's beam got weaker, getting the two back into a stalemate. The Cell Jr. unleashed his Kamehameha to counter Vegeta, and they both stopped right in the middle. Vegeta don't intervene. I thought you were supposed to be prideful or something. This is my fight. Don't stick your nose where it doesn't belong. Shut up you germ. He was about to spew more words until he noticed more Kai signatures show up. Cauliflower and Kale who caught up arrived landing on the ground, creating a T-shape from a bird's eye view. Looks like you need help, Kakarot. I knew it. More Saiyans. For an extinct race, you sure bang like monkeys. You're just jealous. Let's roast this man. Kale. Yes, Caulifla. Caulifla powered up into a Super Saiyan, while Kale extracted some power from her rough form. It wasn't nearly the same as its prime or even Super Saiyan. But once she got more control over it, she would be a force to reckon with. Crush Cannon. Resist Cannon. The red and green Kai combined for a swirl of fun headed towards Cell. Much to his chagrin, he created another Cell Jr. to counter that beam too. Meeting it in the middle, Cell lost more momentum to Goku. Alright, now that that Saiyan is dealt with, I just need to kill Goku and kill them next. Phew, life as a supervillain is hard. Now then just as he was thinking that he felt two more behind him. Feeling the Kai behind is not that much, he felt he could barely make this to survive. Hey dad, do you need help? It seems as if everyone already got their spot. Look, we are a square around Cell throwing our beams at him. There is no way they could win. Yeah, but let's use the move. There is no reason not to. Okay, sure. Just don't mess it up this time. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Distancing themselves from one another, they both got into a weird pose with their arms facing away from each other, sliding toward each other while moving their hands. Counterclockwise, they were in perfect sync. Then in two swift motions of back and forth, their fingers touched in the middle, covering them in a thin layer of Kai. Once that Kai was dispersed, what came out wasn't what came in. One being instead of two. Two voices instead of one. Insurmountable power of fusion. Hell yeah! We did it. Man the power E feel is amazing. We can probably take down Cell all by ourselves. Bolhan. Yes, Dad charging up the Kai. 
They also launched it into Cell, releasing another Cell Jr. He was trapped on all four sides with only his three Cell JRS to support him. And from the looks of how close Goku's beam was to his face, he didn't know how much longer he had. Look around Cell, it's over. You, you have thrown and abandoned all of your fellow androids for power. It has left you all alone while surrounded by members of my race. I would say learn from your mistakes, but you won't be able to do much thinking in the overworld. Damn you Goku and all you treacherous Saiyans. I swear I will come back for revenge, find a way. Always look behind your shoulder or your family might be gone the next instance. Ha ha ha. Goku had enough of this maniac. Pushing his Kai a little more, Cell's hands were getting burned. The next second, his control broke and the blast enveloped his body. His outline was visible as he was floating in the Kai lifelessly. The Cell JRS was next to go on all sides at the same time as their leader who was giving them power was down. Cross the streams. They did just that. All four blasts converged in the middle, creating a massive ball of Kai in the middle, destroying anything within it. All the way down to the very last Cell. The massive blue ball of Kai in the middle didn't stop. Only until all of them stopped injecting Kai into it did the swelling stop, bursting out like an explosion. All of the Saiyans were forced back from the massive explosion landing on their butts. In Goku's case, undoing his transformation immediately. He got up feeling sore all across his body, from his tail to his hair. Man, that forceful exertion pushed my body to its limit. I can feel like I can last longer in that form, but until I achieve Super Saiyan 3 or raise my base in some other way, it will always be a finisher. Now that I think about it, we do have five Saiyans such a train of thought was dangerous. Dangerous to everyone around him that is. He could only think about it later when he spotted the good Android 21 entering the broken lab. She had a painful but determined look on her face as her body disappeared within the confines of the building. Goku went to follow her despite his urgent need to rest. He reached into his pocket to fish out the last Senzu that he had on him, engulped it whole. His stomach rumbled in a mix of content and dissatisfaction. The bean only recovered the soreness he was feeling across his body and replenished a small amount of Kai. Man, that really took a toll on me. It was something interesting he found about Senzu beans. It would be weird if they were an end or be all bean that recovers any wound be it inflicted by God or otherwise, while also recovering stamina. Goku found out that it uses most of its power to heal wounds on the surface, and any excess would be transferred into Kai for the body. So if the person using it had major wounds from Dark Kai, it would heal everything, while leaving the small amount left to the user and vice versa. Still feeling a little limp, Goku walked through the door of the lab to find both Android 21s are facing each other. The Evil 21 didn't look like the purple rag that she was before, but was transformed back into her pink state with a pale complexion. Huh. Evil 21 lashed out her hand towards the other 21 in a desperate attempt. The other 21 may have been weaker before, that was only relatively speaking. She is stronger than Yansha, and that is what really matters. She blocked it with one hand, it felt like a feather hit her. When the good 21 entered the lab, evil 21 was slurping on the rest of the Kai reserves that her captives had. If the good 21 didn't enter in time, the other 21 would have sucked all of the reserves dry, effectively killing everyone captive. Nevertheless, the small reserves were for her to escape to the time machine. While everyone was fighting Cell, not fight her counterpart. Surely going more back in time would work. Unfortunately for her, they were on the same wavelength, literally. Getting her caught in the action, the good 21 pushed the arm back and jabbed the same shoulder. She lost all feeling on that arm immediately, and was followed up with a kick on her opposing leg, dislocating some bones. With no more Kai and a battered body, she couldn't stand up. Goodbye. 21 clasped her hand on the forehead of the 21 on the ground. Covering her head with reddish Kai, 21 created this technique just for this event. She just never thought that she was going to able to use it and destroy her completely. Wait. A firm hand was placed on her shoulder telling her to stop. 21 looked behind her, and Goku was shocked to see a tear form from the blind spot where he was standing. That confirmed his suspicion, and he asked in a grim voice. Killing her won't kill yourself, correct? There has to be another way. Android 21 shook her head. She wished Goku didn't follow her so she can do this by herself. I found out the day when she time traveled. Our souls are linked. 
If I follow her through time without my own volition, I will also travel with her to the other world without it. I have accepted it as it is. No, that can't be right. When we came here, it seems as if you just separated from her. And you fought as if she was going to kill you. If your souls are linked she wouldn't do that. 21 shook her head once more explaining in detail. What she was planning to do was consume me. I had an active mind, sharing it with hers before I separated. If she consumed me, I would go into a deep sleep within her, resulting in me disappearing forever. Well, why don't you just consume her yourself? It started like this. No, I was in an even better position at the start. When I was born, her presence wasn't even there. As time flowed, her presence was becoming more and more known to my consciousness due to the unstable genes that I contain. If she wasn't there in the start but broke out at the end, what good would putting her back do? She will just awaken like last time and grow stronger. I am a failure of an android and should destroy myself. She was really going to do it. Years in the making, years of her dreaming to do this. It was only a step away. But at the same time hesitation crept her. Who would want to die? Maybe she wasn't as ready for this as she steeled herself for. It didn't help that Goku was still talking. 2121 look at me. She turned her head and looked into the dark eyes of Goku. You think that your evil counterpart is unique. Something that you only have. Everyone has some evil in them wanting to get out. I mean, look at that guy over there with the mean face. Goku pointed at Vegeta who was with the other Saiyans as they watched the spectacle. Vegeta had a vein pop from the top of his head emphasizing Goku's point more. He was a cold villain once, and I bet he still has the urges he has to kill everyone around him. But he doesn't, he suppresses them. Maybe his doesn't materialize himself as an evil copy of himself screaming pride or whatever. But his is just as present. You are not that old, younger than 10 right? I think you just need to learn to live with her and control her. Live with her? E, but that's impossible. I, I just know that she will break free again. Why take that risk? When I can eliminate it right here. Think about it. With your brain and power, you can do so much for the world. Is it that worth it to risk your evil self coming out? Which would take a quick and fast ass beating from us. At the cost of helping everyone the best you can. I I dash, she was stumped for words. She actually hadn't thought about a life without evil 21 in a while. What she would do, what she will experience. How much she could accomplish. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. Just take some time to think about it before you leap into action. 21 had some deep reflection and questions that she had to impose on herself. Can she really control her evil self? No. What would these Saiyans know? They don't have a copy of themselves threatened to destroy the world. But at the same time, what if what they are saying is correct? She took a couple of minutes, as she should before she said her final answer. Goku held his breath, he really wanted 21 to continue surviving. It was really unfair to her to die because of a copycat. I, I will do it. Fuse with her that is. But if... It is what you really say, that there is evil and good in everyone. I can't consume her, it would counterintuitive. She would be suppressed a lot, but she will just break out. We need to become one entity again, like the beginning. But this time, accept her instead of letting her form a separate self. Combine us into one. We are too far from one other, even if we come from the same roots. Don't do it, we will become someone else entirely. Not me, not you. We will lose ourselves entirely. So be it. We need a fresh start. You know what they say. New android, new me. With her hand still on the evil 21's head, it shone a bright fluorescent red light illuminating the whole room. Hot steam came out of the pores of both 21's at an extremely high pressure throwing Goku away from her and next to the group. Both of their bodies seemed to melt and started to rub against one another in pink blobs of goo. As they were watching, it was like watching two different colored gums squishing against each other trying to combine. Together, but still distinct. That changed when the steam started to pump out at full force from them. The steam smashed them together in extreme heat. The two gum were not getting chewed, combining with each other until they formed one color totally separate from what they originally were. A bright light emitted blinding everyone in the lab. They all covered their eyes looking away. Hearing soft footsteps, after the lights turned down, they all turned back to look at what happened. Walking away from the bright with steam still everywhere covering the silhouette of the female. 
going through, but not completely out of the smoke, was a curvaceous body pale to the touch. Green eyes looked back at them with red hair flowing around due to the steam. Ho! Oh, uh, she had tiny amounts of freckles on her face, making her face subtly more gorgeous. She was looking a little antsy not wanting to completely get out of the smoke. No glasses were seen to help her vision. Well, no clothes were seen either as the smoke pointedly proved by removing itself from 21's top chest area, revealing the tops of two large marshmallows. Anyone got some clothes? Unfortunately, you are, how should I say it? Don't quite technically have the same potential your children have. I don't. How does that work? Sitting in front of a giant old Namekian Goku was confused as to what he was saying. Goku took this trip to Namek to hopefully have their potential unlocked, before heading to Eldakai for a more powerful version. His other two kids, who barely turned nine a month after the 21 incident, have already had their potentials unlocked and had a major increase in their power. Speaking of Android 21, I wonder what she is doing right now. After equipping herself with clothes, 21, who was a different beast than before, talked about how she needed some isolation to acclimate to her new personality. Goku didn't really think it was the best method since this type of environment is part of her inner evil coming out. But with her several persistent pleads, Goku couldn't really stop her. He never saw her since and continued his training really emphasizing his kid's growth. Before he got started with the god transformation ritual, he wanted to increase his base further. If the Super 8 form was any indicator, it was that he needed his base form to get stronger. Unlocking his potential will kill two birds with one stone, get his base stronger, and get a new transformation. Nevertheless, he was confused as to why his plan that he laid ahead of himself didn't work. How should I put it? In its rawest form, the potential I see in some people is a sort of hidden power deep within that I could then rise to the surface through a special method. Although I can't bring all of it, you need to have some for it works. Potential usually reside in people that destined to be stronger in the future if they don't die. That is not the case for you. Goku nodded his head for him to continue. But he was already slowly piecing what the old Namekian was saying. In your case, you already unlocked your potential since your youth, and that helped accelerate your growth. But it wasn't the case for all of your strength. If young you and your children were at the same age and did the same training for a year, who do you think would be stronger? Your children gained enormous potential since you, a powerful being is their father. With your low potential, you were able to continuously stimulate it by training arduously. If that's the case, wouldn't people like Vegeta, who also trains massively, catch up to me since he has more potential? Well here's the thing, you unleashed your full potential already somehow. Similar to what I did to Gohan and Bula. If I unleash this so-called Vegeta from your recollection, he would definitely have a slightly higher growth rate than you. So you are saying I already have my potential unlocked, and that my kids have a higher growth rate than me eventually going to outpower me. Hey, from what I can tell from your hard work and already big head start, I give them another 100 years until they do. They got what they came for and boarded the ship they came in saying goodbye to Grand Elder Guru and the rest of the Namekians they met on the way. Chichi was acting as their personal chauffeur for the quick trip. Back home. Yeah. Ah. So bored. Is there anything fun to do around here? Stop moving your arm. We can go shopping after this if you want. I also found the best nail salon in the mall. That has the best designs. Can't I just like destroy the shop and steal the clothes? It would be so much more fun that way. That's a joke right? Bulma and 18 were talking together in their lab. Android 18 had her hand laid on the table with a panel wide open inside of a high-tech machine. Bulma was studying it in depth to see how Android works. Tech like this, if figured out, could revolutionize mankind. Eternal beauty, supercomputer minds, anything was a possibility. 18 rolled her eyes. She suddenly had an idea that she definitely knew was a fun activity. How about inviting me to some of the nighttime activities that you girls and Goku do in the bedroom? She gave a suggestive smirk to Bulma who had a welding helmet on. She couldn't see Bulma's exasperated eyes. Oh please, I know you have been pushing that agenda ever since Seventeen left. Ever since we fought Caulifla with Goku, he hasn't let anything like that come out of his control again. The next thing he knows, random strangers would appear on his bed. Seventeen left soon after Sixteen has been rebuilt by Bulma. He wasn't too banged up. 
but with Bomber's insignificant knowledge, it took some time. When he awakened and inquired information about 21, he left the facility and ventured off to find her. 17, influenced by 16 and his nature-loving self, found a job as a recruit for a park ranger. It was only 18 left in the house, but she didn't want to seem to leave anytime soon. The easy life and fun with the girls were enough for the others to want her around. Of course, knowing what was happening inside of the bedroom only got her more worked up. So she planted a spikum that was integrated into her system and watched every night. She was so eager to join that she asked Goku bluntly. But Goku was fed up with the girls he had already. The three girls, Caulifla, Chichi, and Bulma, wanted children again increasing the family by another three. He had a headache already with all the commotion that even 18's sexy body didn't persuade him. After all, if she just wanted it to be only benefits, there was no reason for Goku to accept. He already had four other girls to please. Come on Bulma, you can talk to him since I already did. It won't get awkward or anything. It will just be friends with benefits. The toys you gave me aren't cutting it. I want the real thing. Alright, calm down you nympho. I will talk to Goku about it. Just stop moving your hand. Hello, um, Mr. Sun. I have called you here because of your daughter Bulla. Goku was sitting in the principal's office. And on the other side was a middle-aged man. That looked like the recent days have aged him terribly. Bulla was on the chair beside him looking out the window with her arms crossed pouting like she hasn't done anything wrong. Yes sir, what did she do this time? Bulla looked at her dad angrily that he was talking to the principal in a respectful tone and seemingly took his side as well. She got into a fight with a boy of her age. I am not sure of the specifics. But what I know is that she punched first and gave him multiple bruises. I will have you know that behavior like this is not tolerated. Not even to the best performing student in our school. We are looking at a lawsuit if you do not come up with something. Bulla, why did you do it? He didn't really care about the lawsuit capsule corporation wiping its butt with gold. But why would his delicate Bulla do such a thing? He was trying to flirt with me. It was so gross. Thinking that he was good enough for me. I can basically hear his thoughts that are on me. Bulla scrunched her nose in disgust while Goku got the general gist of it. Sorry about this principle. I will make sure to contact the victim's family and thoroughly discipline her at home. After that, they all jumped into the car with Gohan waiting for them in the back. Normally sitting in a car with the sun out was a hazard, but let's be real. Gohan was the hazard for the car from just him sitting in it. Why do we use a car anyways? Can't we just fly back to the house? Dad, you fly around all the time. In fact, I am already smarter than high schoolers. Can't I just go to college and get my degree already? Goku's eyes glinted a strange light. He recognized the underlying attitude in that tone. Bulla get in the car, and I will tell you something. This is for you to Gohan. Bulla got into the car in a half and sat next to Gohan who was looking anxiously at the two. Kids, we are stronger than the people here, but don't forget we aren't above them. When you are older, you can fly around the city if you want, but it doesn't hurt to be in the car once in a while. Have some humility. As for the degree thing, like your mom, not me. Just remember, have some empathy, especially you Buller. What you did to that kid almost killed him. He didn't do anything that bad. E, but he dash, no buts. Slap him once to make him stop. Don't fight him like he is Cell or something. Bulla deflated and looked at her hands that she placed over her knees. Gohan comforted her a little on the side. Hey King Kai. Oh, Goku. You startled me. What do you want? Goku instantly transmitted himself to King Kai's planet in a swift to ask him to teleport them to meet the Supreme Kai. King Kai was just having a lovely chess match with Gregory before he was startled moving all the pieces around. Can I ask for a favor? No. I want you to teleport us to the Supreme Kai and ask him to train us. The Supreme Kai? How do you know of him? Ah, Frieza? Hum, makes sense. Anyway, the answer is no. I can't just waltz in there and brazenly ask the Supreme Kai for you to become disciples. Are you crazy? I have so much to live for. Like my car over there. As they were talking, Gohan and Bulla, who came with Goku to get their potential unlocked, were chasing Bubbles around. The three monkey tails frolicked around, and Bubbles had no chance in the chase. Or, oh, come on Kai buddy old pal, do me a favor. No, please. 
No, pretty please. No, why did the generous King Kai help his friend Goku? Why? Because if he did, he would get two more vintage cars in mint condition. Deal. Goku scooped up his two children, his arms and King Kai, but his hand on Goku's shirt, and walked to the land of the case. Halt! What are you doing here, Northern Kai? You don't have permission to wait, who is that? You dare bring mortals to the sacred realm, Kabito. The Supreme Kai's attendant was looking redder than usual, when King Kai brought dirty mortals to walk on their godly pastures. WWW wait Kibito, TT there is a reason. No, I will not listen to your preposterous reasoning. It seems that we need a new North Kai for replacement pronto. Eat. King Kai, scared out of his wits, ran behind Goku at amazing speeds cowering behind him. You could only see his antennas poke out revealing that he was still there. What was the point of gaining the cars if I won't be there to enjoy them? King Kai was weeping comically when another person approached from behind Kibito. Wait Kibito, let's hear them out first. Northern King Kai has been doing well with his reports and has mentioned a special mortal in them. Is this in King Kai? A short, well-mannered man with purple skin and elf ears appeared. The thing that caught Goku's eyes the most was the elusive Pataro earrings hanging off his ears as a decoration. I yes, Supreme One. This is him. He wanted to meet you for... Um, what was it again? Oh, yeah. He wanted to train under you. Train under a Supreme Kai. I see he is as foolish as he is ignorant. No random nobody can just ask the Supreme One if they can train under them. I will be happy to teach you Smee of my skills. Supreme Kai. The tall pink man was surprised when Supreme Kai seemingly wanted to lose his dignity, teaching these useless mortals anything. I have been watching you ever since North Kai told me about you. I have to say, your fighting prowess is incredible indeed. And it seems Zeno-sama sent that you have come to seek me before I did you or the foretold threat that will come soon. Follow me. Goku and the two children followed Supreme Kai, while agape at the scenery before them. The air itself seemed ethereal, and it felt like they were breathing in pure Kai. The endless green grass and the sky above them contrasted each other in a way that they did not seem real. As Supreme Kai was leading them away, Kibito watched them go starstruck. King Kai was also left behind feeling a little awkward. So, uh, I will go now. Seeing Kibito didn't respond, King Kai prepared to leave. But he didn't want to leave without teasing the man, knowing that if he retaliates violently, Supreme Kai would not let him off the hook. Sorry. You couldn't do the one job that you had here. You can go back to being useless now. Kibito tried to grab the disappearing Kai, but just grabbed hot air. He looked very vexed and stormed off to do whatever attendants do. Why do you seek my help, Son Goku? From what I have seen, you have quite sufficient power. I'm afraid I won't be able to help much. And that was true. Kaishin himself was weak compared to the mortal before him. If he really wanted to get stronger, then a trip to the Destroyer's world would be a much more fruitful trip. If he came back, that is. I heard that you have something called the Zed Sword. Ah, yes. The Zeta Sword. The Sword of Legend will definitely prove some challenge to you and your offspring. Gohan and Bulla tilted their head curiously at the strange man, while he chuckled a little at the absurdity of it. They walked for a bit before arriving at the place where the sword was embedded. Goku walked up to the sword and prepared to lift it. Before he could, Shin interjected. The Zed Sword is incredibly heavy. I would suggest using that Super 8 form as you call it. Goku nodded at Shin indicated that he heard, but proceeded to try and lift the sword. Shin shook his head and speculated that it wouldn't take long before Goku would tire himself out and transform. It is really heavy. But I can't lose to a sword. Such an angle was unfavorable for Goku to pull the sword, but he kept going anyway. Ten seconds passed by, and Shin was about to tell Goku to transform again. He couldn't watch Goku struggle for so long. After all, all of their time is precious. His words were stopped by a faint squeaking sound. Thinking that he misheard, Shin strained his ear to find out where that sound came from. He heard it again, and this time he was about to pinpoint where it was. The Zed Sword. Impossible. The Zed Sword, a sword known to all Kai for its immeasurable weight, started to move closer and closer to freedom. Ha! Huh. With one last pull, Goku unsheathed the sword from its natural habitat. It was so hard to handle and swing. 
that even with both hands, Goku haphazardly swung it around. The others had to back up just so they wouldn't get chopped up. It didn't take long for Goku to get used to the weight of the sword and started to make more accurate cuts and swings. Of course, he never trained in the way of the sword and only did swings that he thought looked cool. I'm a cool knight, take that. Good thing no one could hear his childish thoughts. After spending a good amount of time with the sword, he stopped and threw the sword. It was rotating in the air looking quite dangerous. Shin let out a yelp at the mishandling of the legend. He couldn't take Goku picking it up with his base form, let alone seeing the precious sword fly through the air. The target location was Gohan as he was sitting crisscrossed on the floor. He stood up to catch the sword that his father threw at him. Knowing his limits, he powered up to a Super Saiyan and caught it with both of his arms. He held it steady for a second before the weight of the sword came crashing down, bringing Gohan with it. They both face planted on the floor, and Gohan let go startled that he didn't last long. The two of you, share the sword. I want both of you to carry it until you can last a minute. That's easy. In your base form. You just had to talk, you idiot. Wait, dad. Summer just started. I can't train the entire summer. Then you better get started quickly. Goku didn't have the time to deal with Buller's complaints and instantly transmitted himself out of there. He knew that he needed to start the god ritual sooner rather than later but he wasn't ready yet. According to the Saiyan book, a Saiyan would need to perform the ritual every time one would want to become a Super Saiyan God. They would only borrow the godly Kai, not store it in their body as a second reserve. Massively different from what Vegeta and Goku had in the series. Goku speculated this was the case because of the exposure of godly Kai that they had before becoming gods. The old Goku compared to himself spent years in the other world, King Kai and Supreme Kai to train before the ritual. His body had time to accumulate the feeling of godly Kai inside his body without him knowing it. His body has eventually gained the ability to store divine Kai of the smallest amounts. Without training with it, it would stay like that forever. But when he became a god, the influx of divine Kai inflated that pea-sized storage into a massive one. Goku, this time knowing what to look for, could feel inside his body strange different Kai that wasn't normal. It didn't quite become a storage like what he thought so he needed to spend more time in divine places. Only then would he activate the ritual and become a true Saiyan god. He teleported back to the house to grab some supplies for the long training session that he was going to do. Grabbing the suitcase in his bedroom, he was going to teleport back. In and out. Man, I am hungry now. That was when Bulma busted open the door. She looked tired as if she hasn't slept for days. Hugging onto her leg, she was dragging a blonde that just won't quit. Goku, you need to do something about her. Bulma tried to shake her leg, but 18 held firmly. This was the chance she was waiting for. Hanging onto Bulma, even when she tried to use the bathroom, was finally bearing its fruit. Now there is something I could eat. Vegeta, the ever active prince, was doing his morning workout in the gravity chamber in the backyard of his house. It wasn't large by any means. But the view on the island was second to none. He got out with a towel wrapped around his neck as usual and went to take a shower. The hot water pelted on his face mercilessly. Each sting awoke Vegeta's brain even more as he thought about how much he has changed. He didn't like it. Once the prideful prince has been stopped on again and again in terms of power that his motivation to get stronger couldn't keep up. Freezer, a tyrant who has been playing with Vegeta like a dog with his overwhelming strength. He couldn't even breathe in his direction without fearing for his life. In the end, Goku crushed him and his brother like an ant while Vegeta watched helplessly in the background. Androids, machines that kicked his butt even after all his hard training to become the best. He couldn't even put up a worthy fight against true strength. Just one knock from a cell disgraced him enough. Lastly, Goku, a freak of nature to this universe. Always under in power by so much. He even wonders if he was the Saiyan prodigy or Goku. Even with so much work, it isn't even close to what he saw Goku last. So much frustration at how much he always at the bottom, no matter how much time and effort he put in. Vegeta got out of the shower, dried himself, and put on some clothes. It wasn't anything fancy, just some regular attire. Right after he got out of the shower, what felt like a sack of potatoes fell into his arms. It was a little girl with a small strand of blonde hair on the top. She was sleeping like an angel peacefully in Vegeta's arms. He was unused to his new daughter, Eshelet, 
But as his little princess, he would do anything for her. You took so long in the shower. Hurry it up. We are supposed to meet my sister today. I haven't seen her in years. Oh, I can't wait until she sees Ys. I may have given you the priority when naming her first, but I am sticking with the nickname I came up with. All children after are going to be named by me. Vegeta's eyebrow twitched at the woman's declaration of words. Especially the last part. Woman, you do not command me. I only agreed to go because you are taking Ashalot with you. I don't trust Kakarot. He might influence him in a way that is unbeneficial to a Saiyan. Oh, please, he can't be that bad. Loosen up a bit, Vegeta. After all, you are basically brothers in law and race. He had his eyes closed internally screaming at every word that Tite said. They landed on the landing zone in Tite's fast aircraft in a matter of hours. Eshelet rang the doorbell while carrying Eshelet in her arms. She gave a look at Vegeta seemingly telling him to behave. He grunted in response, and Tites knew that was all she was going to get from him. It wasn't long before they could hear locks on the other side of the door get turned and Bulma smiling face on the other side. Sister. The two girls both said the same word at the same time. They ran into each other and hugged tightly as they haven't seen each other in years. Come in. Bama invited them inside her humble abode. Vegeta followed tights in, but didn't say a word eyeing everything he sees with his signature glare. Goku and the kids aren't here right now, but I will call him over. They is training with this guy named Supreme Kai or something. You know Saiyans always training Vegeta stopped in his tracks, while Bama continued telling Tite's recent news, and introducing her to the others in the house. Supreme Kai how is Kakarot training with him of all people? This this. You may have the upper hand now, but I will catch up, no matter what. I finally did it. Bulla was holding the Z sword high above her head in a grandeur fashion. She and Gohan finally were able to lift the sword shy of three months. Of course, her greatest motivation was not to miss out on her summer vacation. Great. Any sooner and your mother would have killed me. Let's go kids, your aunt is waiting for us. He has done everything he wanted in the sacred land already. He could just come back to break the Zed Sword after the ritual. Goku felt the Divine Kai inside his body dormant and ready to be used. He just needed to unlock a channel to use it by doing the ritual. Grabbing his two kids, he used instant transmission to teleport back to Kaulifla. He couldn't teleport to Bulma because she had no Kai. Or to put it in a more apt term, she modified herself and became an android. With the help of 18's data on how to become an android, Bulma and Chichi turned themselves into androids. Although they weren't as powerful as 18 was, the exponential increase in power was good enough for them. Goku was able to meet Tights and her uppity personality, and it was soon time for dinner. They were able to have fun small talk, but the entire time before and while they were eating, Vegeta was staring at Goku as he could see through him. Goku marked it off as Vegeta things, but he was stopped in the living room after they were done with supper. Kakarot, I heard you are training with the Supreme Kai. Yes, I am. I don't know how you did it, but lead me to him so I can train as well. Okay? Well Dash, Goku was going to agree with Vegeta, but suddenly a voice was echoed inside his mind. Pausing for a while, he spoke to Vegeta with an understanding look. Sorry, Vegeta, Supreme Kai just contacted me and said you can't come to the sacred land of Case to train. What? Why? He said and I quote, people of his kind are not allowed in the sacred lands. I made an expectation with you and your children, don't make me regret it. That little. Vegeta was rightfully fuming at the prospect. I will only get further and further behind in my training. Goku shrugged in response. Unable to say anything to console the Saiyan Prince. He stayed looking mad the entire time until they left back on the airplane. It sure was going to be awkward asking for Vegeta's help in completing the ritual to become a Super Saiyan God tomorrow. But Goku didn't dwell on it. It's not like he is mad at me. Supreme Kai was the one who didn't want him there. As Goku was getting ready for bed, Supreme Kai contacting him again via telepathy. Before Supreme Kai could speak, Goku interjected. Supreme Kai, are you sure you aren't being too unreasonable? Vegeta is a good guy at heart and hasn't done anything bad. It's not like he is going to learn anything useful under you. Wow, what? No, he can't come. And take that back. Such a blow to his pride as the Supreme Supreme Kai, creator of planets and life. Anyways you need to come back and look at this. It is very urgent. Reluctant to go back after he just came back home to a warm bed, 
he just couldn't think of any reason that could be good enough for him to. Surely there is nothing that urgent that I need to go right. What is it? It's a Saiyan of unimaginable power that is a threat to our universe. On a far distant planet. You said your name is Chilai, right? How did this happen? What is he? A large man in a cloak covering his body and hair was talking to a short green alien with white hair. The man just stumbled upon this planet in his travels and now has to deal with a raging monster tearing the planet apart. Seeing the man as a traveler and recognizing his race, she immediately saw hope in her situation. How would I know? The natives on this planet are extremely hostile and rude, and before I knew it, they antagonize him and he started raging all over the place. Now he won't stop no matter what I do or say. The short green alien looked incredibly stressed, aging by the minute, all while looking worriedly at the bulking giant. The spaceship that she used ripped to shreds so she couldn't escape from this backwater planet. All she could do is hope that this strange traveler could help her in quelling down this beast. This is crazy, his power level is off the charts. I have never seen anything like it even from my brother. This must be the legendary Super Saiyan. I never thought I will see the day. Can't you do something like give him a pacifier? Aren't supposed to be related or something. Now that is a little racist missy. But let me see what I can do. If all else fails, we just retreat in my spaceship. The traveler pulled back his hood and gave his large backpack to Chilai, releasing his black hair like a waterfall. It reached all the way to his waist. That didn't surprise Chilai because she already knew his race. But what did surprise her was what came next. Those luscious black locks slowly became yellow from the top down. The tail around his waist also turned yellow like it was made out of pure gold. His power skyrocketed attracting the attention of the beast to him. He was ready to fight, ready to push his limits. The gold aura followed him as he punched the monstrosity in the cheek. Now this feels good. Vegeta cock blocked by a curse Kai was by all accounts. Unhappy that he couldn't further this training and catch up to Goku. Kicking a random piece of litter on the beach floor. It went sailing towards the ocean and passed his line of vision within seconds. Who needs the training of a Supreme Kai? Who needs Kakarot? Vegeta's next goal was to figure out how to transform into the ape form that Goku possesses. He could technically control his great ape form, but that was through sheer training. He still had the rage of the ape inside him when he transformed. He was just missing something, and from what he learned with the Saiyan book, it was the apparent emotional control for the best great ape transformation. Emotional control. Who do you think I am? Some wavering harlot. I can control my emotions easily. Vegeta selectively decided to forget what happened with the piece of litter a few seconds ago. Next, he needed what the book called perfect control. With his personality, it was hard for him to grasp how exactly to achieve both requirements. And just a simple question to Goku would do wonders with his progression. But as usual, Vegeta shoved that thought out of his mind and went to his usual training grounds to hopefully find a breakthrough. The solitary rock formations gave him an unusually calm peace of mind. Ugh, what did this guy's father give him to eat? Throughout the entire morning, the once lively planet of Gargo that housed various different alien species and a hub of intergalactic trade became akin to a barren moon. Cities vanished from the planet's surface, and plants withered away in fright of the two Goliaths that duped out. Aliens were scurrying away as fast as they can into their spaceships at the spaceport, and the local residents can only grieve later as they board commercial spacecraft. Boom. Another explosion rocketed right next to the spaceport, making some aliens fly about. Luckily, the very next second, the fight went miles in another direction. Raditz was trying his best to keep Broly at bay with his recently acquired Super Saiyan powers. He thought he was an amazing genius that was just one step behind his brother. But just a few weeks passed, and he was being stomped on the ground again. He got up and avoided another unhinged fist that he didn't doubt would have killed him if he didn't dodge. Shilai, I can't subdue let alone kill this guy. We have to escape to space and hope he will calm down when we later check on him. Shilai wore an ugly expression when she heard such words. No, why you go and leave? I will stay with Broly. They have gone through so much together. There was no way she was going to leave him. They met just a few months ago, but she felt as if she knew him for all her life. It started when she was alone in her small spaceship going around to distant planets to look for junk to sell. She always led the hardest of lives, 
so she did what she could to survive. Originally, she planned to join Frieza's core for an easier life, but that fell through when his entire lineage died due to that Saiyan guy. Who cares what others see you as? Having a better life was all that mattered. That was when she received a signal of distress from an unmarked planet. Originally she didn't want to check it out, as from what the distress signal was, it dated back decades before. There would be no resources to snatch, and the people would have been long dead since then. She didn't know why, but something within her conscience told her to go. Not for the money, not for rescuing the survivors, but for something else. Landing on the planet of Vampa, she met a tall older gentleman and his son. The older guy, who introduced himself as Paragus thanked her for coming to save them. Seeing the tale of both of them surprised her as she knew Saiyans were extinct except for a few. If the few grey hairs that were beginning to emerge didn't say how old this guy was, then his outdated armor and scouter definitely did. Thank you for your spaceship. Unfortunately, the ship isn't big enough for all of us. After that, Paragus shot a Kai blast at the green girl blasting her away. He shot to kill. But Chilai's improvised armor from the remains of Frieza's army proved too tough to outright be killed. Not really caring if she lived or not, he boarded the ship and was preparing to take off. He found out her small ship had an extensive and complex system. He didn't think that his piloting skills dwindled so much as he was stranded. The only explanation came from Chilai who was able to come back to the spaceship. You can't take it without me. I customize my ship so only I can start it up and use it. Now, back off or I will not hesitate to shoot. She aimed a laser pistol at the head of Paragus. But Broly stood and put his enormous body to block her way. She blasted her little pistol. But she might as well tickle Broly to have the same effect. What else could she do? Grabbing the pistol and crushing it with his hand, she like gulped a large swab of saliva down her throat. Get on board and lead us to the closest inhabited planet. Don't even think of misguiding us or I will figure how to work this spacecraft by myself. Complying with the two men, she smacked herself mentally on coming to the rescue of these obscene men. It didn't stop with her dropping them off however. It was like they were on an adventure to every planet they came to. Every time they would arrive on a planet, something would happen to make them stay there for a little, then having to flee to a different place. During this time, Chilai and Broly got quite close. Seeing the naivety and innocence of Broly led her to teach him some things about language and life most of the time away from Paragus's eyes. Of course, Paragus caught on, however, and planned to get rid of Chilai. He studied how she controlled her spaceship enough for him to do it himself. So he devised a plan when they arrived at Gargo to finally get rid of her. Everything went without a hitch, he was able to separate Broly and Chilai, and was about to kill her with his own hands. He was about to do it before Broly intercepted in time and stopped him. Furious that Broly would choose that girl over him, he used his controller to shock Broly. How could he betray him? For all the love he put in this is what he gets in return. Children cannot appreciate the apparent electric love that parents provide. He turned on the intensity of the shocker because Broly was slowly getting up. Used to the voltage. He almost broke free but was stopped once again. Paragus was going to finish his mission and wake Broly from his blinding love. Until something happened with the shocker. Smoke was coming out the back as the insides fried themselves. The shocker was never meant to be used to full intensity. And the first time Paragus did it, it fried itself. Once the shock receded, Paragus slowly backed away not wanting to face the wrath of his son. But he was too far gone. Rage started to build up inside of him and his eyes turned white. He started destroying everything in his path including his father which turned into a pile of blood. Then Chilai met Raditz and enlisted him for his help. But as it turned out, to the horror of the alien residents and Chilai herself, the legendary Super Saiyan could not match the ever-increasing power of the real legendary Super Saiyan. For me, this is what I get for trying to have some morals. Get boned in the butt by a giant Saiyan. Raditz decided to agree with Chilai, although it left a bad taste in his mouth. After all the aliens leave, he would get on his own spaceship and skedaddle out of here. He could barely stall and any longer a random punch might turn him into a mist of blood. Yo Raditz, nice hair, it suits you. Unable to handle the pressure anymore. When he heard a familiar voice behind him, he started for a second. That second proved to be fatal as a fist was lodged into his stomach, sending him flying right to the voice. Goku traveled to Gargo with the Supreme Kai, in a bid for Goku to stop this terror. 
As expected from a Supreme Kai to know the history of his universe, he knew what the legendary Super Saiyan was, and what he was capable of. Usually, they died to natural causes, by Saiyans themselves in fear, or by Beerus. They mostly never grew up to have the potential to destroy the universe like this situation. The near-godly Saiyan was his only hope to stop it, since Beerus as usual was asleep like the cat he was. Seeing Raditz fly in his direction, Goku and Shin both stepped to the side at the same time, so they wouldn't get hit but the spikes. Ugh, Goku is that you? Raditz's transformation was up, and his hair reverted back to its jet black appearance. Who else would it be? Yeah, of course. Should have known when you didn't catch me. Goku helped up his brother supporting him as he stood. Tell me, what's the situation? That that is the situation. Raditz pointed towards the rampaging Broly destroying everything in his path. And with that, he exhausted his energy and fell back down to sleep. Raditz's journey through space was a fruitful one. Going to so many planets without killing intent, learning so many cultures instead of destroying them, even interacting with locals in a non-violent way. He could confidently say he thoroughly enjoyed himself, and with his travels honed his emotions, and somewhat fixed his moral compass. Being the Saiyan that he is, he would still always use the gravity belt he had and train his body. It wasn't long before he was able to reach the level of Super Saiyan as his brother did in the fight with Frieza. Traveling through the stars, he didn't know when his travel would be over, and he would decide to come back to Earth. Gargo definitely had something that interested him. He heard from resources that a fruit named the Fruit of the Tree of Might, last of its kind able to give untold power. He needed to seek it out in order for something that had happened on Earth not to happen again, if that thing was planted. When he reached the black market auction, he was utterly stumped. That is the Fruit of the Tree of Might. That's basically a cough drop. On display was a literal cough drop colored orange in color. In the description was, give you unimaginable strength, use during a cough, and you will feel the power course through you and revitalize you. The audience of rich fellows of course didn't know it was a scam, because they only heard of the amazing power of the fruit, and not what the fruit actually looked like. He went up to leave the place, but he didn't really read the rules, or else he would have known that he can't leave once the auction begins. The bodyguards stopped him, and a huge brawl ensued with Raditz making havoc, and consequently sparked attention from the authorities. Busting the underground auction, everyone ran. Needless to say, this wasn't an uncommon occurrence. Raditz would always get into trouble whether the person was minding his own business or laughing at how stupid Raditz's face looked. Usually, that person's face would look stupider than Raditz's after the fact. Leaving the crime scene, he stumbled upon another. One where there was a brute running out of an alley of where a scared little green girl was. Talking to her, he raced to stop his fellow Saiyan, but proved to be underpowered. His power reminded him of his brother somewhat. Limitless, powerful to no end. A wall erected to show how weak he actually was. Seeing Goku take over to try to stop that brute, Raditz conceded. Conceded in the fact that he will always be behind no matter what he does. That is just his place in this world. That is just his destiny. Vegeta, however, has yet to concede to that fact. No matter how many times it is shoved in his face. Meditating on a cliff, he sensed an evil presence behind him. Jumping up, he launched a sidekick with no warning. The person easily grabbed Vegeta's leg with a good hold. He couldn't pull it back. Thinking he underestimated his opponent since he was Earth, he transformed into Super Saiyan and tried again. But even still, he couldn't release himself from the grip that was being exerted on his leg. Transforming once again, he forcefully ripped it out of the demon's grip. Excellent. You are powerful, but do you want more power? Revealing his pink face, a mean goatee, and a large M on his forehead written in what only could be presumed as cursive. His eyes leaked out a sense of controlled and refined evil, compressed and delivered to send tingles down your spine. What stood out to Vegeta the most was his crooked smile that made Vegeta's gut wrench in disgust. I've been watching you for a while. You seek to beat this Kakarot fellow, correct? I can give you all the power you need in exchange for something. I'll go with you. Vegeta wasn't stupid and understood that this person was incredibly dangerous. But when Vegeta looked at the Kai this person possessed, it was separated into two parts. One of his own, that felt like it was part of his body, and the second was foreign, aiding the original in a way Vegeta hadn't seen before. Intrigued and needing more power, 
he followed the strange fellow who called himself Deborah. If anything bad happens, he could always just kill him as he was weaker even than him even with his power increase. Traveling for a while, they reached a small abode in the middle of the barren lands. Only rocks were in sight with any life force miles away. Wait out here, I have to speak to my boss. Deborah bid Vegeta stay, but didn't get a response as all Vegeta did was look around his surroundings. He has so much resentment and evil in his heart. He is perfect. Entering the tent he spoke to the person in front of him. Master Babidi, I have the solution we have been looking for. Inside was a small midget on top of a stool. He had his back turned against them as he was working on something on the table. It was white in color, and it looked like a large teapot with an extended spout. Deborah, we will go with my plan. Enough with your warnings. After I finished with the energy absorber, we will possess some earthlings here and have them steal energy from people. Drats. I can't seem to get this magical equation correct. Babidi was consulting a book to figure out what he did wrong. Despite being scolded, Deborah didn't back down and kept on talking. Remember when I told you I felt something different about the temporal flux surrounding Earth? I'm very sensitive to abnormal energies. So I went to check it out. And indeed there were individuals that are too strong here now. But I found someone, he continued to talk about how they could use Vegeta to willingly give up his energy in exchange for power. They were both unsuitable candidates as they did not possess the correct Kai type that they sought. Only people with normal Kai could work. But Biddy grinned in delight that they didn't have to wait years to awaken the view of his dreams. Goku fought Broly to a standstill. He was only in his Super Saiyan state. But that state was stronger than Raditz's, since he mastered perfect control. Similar to Kale, Broly's power just kept on climbing and climbing, and he needed something to calm him down. Even with Super Ape, Goku theorized that he would not be able to put him to sleep with one punch. And if he tried and didn't succeed, that would only accelerate the rate at which Broly gained power. At this rate, he would have to try since there would be nothing to calm his anger. Good thing he was recently able to apply Kaiken to the transformation with no immediate backlash. That was when he spotted white hair poking out from a rock sneaking peeks into the hectic battle. He was immediately able to recognize that hair in this universe. Of course, she is here. Those two are destined to meet even if my arrival disturbed the timeline. He thought that eventually there would be something universally threatening because of his arrival. But Broly is not going to be the case this time. Transforming into a super ape, he raced over to Chilai at unmatched speeds. Broly tried to give chase, but he lagged behind due to his lack of build-up in power. Reaching the rock wall she resided in, she saw him coming and decided to hide. She didn't know why he was heading in this direction, but she hoped he would fly past. She didn't want to be in the crossfire. Feeling her hand being grabbed roughly, she yelped in surprise. When her vision stabilized from the motion, she saw an angry Broly with only violence on his mind. She didn't doubt for a second he would barrel past her and kill in collateral, in a bid to get the person behind her. Hey you, let go. I am not a great shield at all. I'm less than half of his size. Please, I don't want to die. Tears started going down her eyes as she struggled to escape Goku's hairy hands. She was right, she is around half of his size. How is that going to work in the future? I can only pray the next time I see you, Chilai, you aren't crippled or dead. Ah, Chilai could only scream as she couldn't think of anything else to do. Her brain was firing crazily, messing up her thoughts and consciousness. Her life flashed before her eyes, and she closed them in fear. She relived her life in just a few short seconds. From seeing her parents die to the harsh struggles, and to finally meeting Broly and the good times they had. She kept on screaming until her voice started to wear out and become raspy. Surprised she opened her eyes and once again yelped in shock. Broly with no pupils, looked visibly calmer and stared at Chilai, who was being held up by Goku like she was Simba. Chilai. Dash. His pupils slowly came back to where they receded from, and his innocence returned. He was looking at Chilai in confusion, unable to process exactly what he did. At that moment though, a wave of extreme exhaustion hit him, and he collapsed on the floor unconscious. What do I need to do? Vegeta followed Deborah inside the compound and met the small Babidi. Vegeta thought he sounded familiar but disregarded it when it didn't come to mind. Deborah then explained to Vegeta that all he needed to do was to provide a chunk of his kai to the white container on the counter. In exchange, Babidi would grant Vegeta a mark of power, 
they called it, increasing his power whenever he activated it. Of course, that was a ruse as Babidi wanted to put the mark to control Vegeta after. He questioned the shady business dealers as to why they would need a large amount of Kai from him. They responded that they were only researchers that wanted to conduct and study normal Kai. When he heard the words normal Kai, his curiosity peaked. People normally called normal Kai just Kai as most mortals in the universe use this type of Kai. There were rare other types of Kai out there that other races used. One such example was the races in Yadrat. They used different types of Kai Bur Kai all the same, and were able to teach Goku the techniques in the same fashion as they do. Vegeta decided to ask them where they hailed from after the exchange, as if he asked before, it might bring in some unwarranted hostility. After all, everyone was privy to their own secrets. Vegeta was about to inject a medium-sized piece of Kai into the container until his hand was just a few inches away. He had some hesitation and some questions ran through his mind. Would this destroy his pride in battle? To gain power from an outside source. No, Vegeta threw away his pride when he accepted. All that matters now is defeating Goku no matter what. What if they use his Kai for something harmful? Deborah walked up behind Vegeta, seeing he didn't forfeit his Kai yet, and spoke behind his ear, employing some special strategies from his homeland. It didn't feel like Deborah was talking, but it was like in Vegeta's head. Put in your Kai. What are you afraid of? This amount of Kai and be found anywhere. Put it in, do it. Playing devil's advocate was his specialty and it succeeded. It was the truth Vegeta wasn't putting a large amount of Kai in the container. Such amounts could be easily found in medium-sized and higher-level planets. What Vegeta didn't know, and quite frankly blind too, was that his Kai as a Super Saiyan was purer than normal Kai. Such purity would do much better in Awakening Buu. Vegeta was successfully turned, and he put the Kai in the container. After he did so Babidi and Deborah were grinning at Vegeta's stupidity. Who knew unleashing a universe-threatening creature was this easy? Come on Shin, do me a solid my man. No can do Goku. I stretched the rules when I allowed your children to reside and train here. I cannot do the same to that menace. In fact, I will kill him here and now to save our universe in the future. Supreme Kai walked towards Broly with his desire firmly placed out in the open. They were back in the Supreme Lands as Gargo was thoroughly destroyed due to the fight. Shilai heard what Shin said and stood between them to protect Broly. She was extremely nervous, especially finding out that who she was facing was the Supreme Kai. Highest Lord in the land. Move aside, Shin said in an aggressive and calm tone. That didn't fit his character at all. He needed to fulfill his duty as the god of creation and protect his creations. No, it wasn't Shilai who spoke, but Goku who went to stand beside her. Seeing them two there, Raditz also joined them in protecting Broly. Some Goku, why do you protect him? He will destroy a universe if not after he wakes up then, when he fully realizes his power. Such an irrational choice to think he can change. E Broly is not like that. He is normally calm and gentle with everything. Please, I have been with him for a long time. Believe me slash chill I had to say her piece, and it was obvious from the facial expression of Kaishin that he did not believe her. That is why I want you to train him, Shin. I know you can. Train him to have a calm mind, so he won't go berserk once again. With Chilai, as long as she is with him, he should be able to restrain himself better. Until he is able to control his power. Ugh, you are the most infuriating person I have met to date Son Goku. Only gods can topple you. I will think about it. For now, leave the sacred land. I need time to think. Goku smiled at Shin, knowing that he would agree. That is just who he is. He picked up Broly and with Chilai and Raditz, left towards Raditz's spaceship. They were able to bring it with them in their teleportation. As for Chilai's, it got destroyed in the chaos. Yo, Raditz, are you coming back to Earth? The kids really miss you. No, I won't. I have learned a lot from my travels, and I still want to keep going and explore the universe. Maybe in a couple of years more, I will come back. Goku and Raditz caught up in each other's affairs for a little bit, while Chilai was watching over Broly. It was time to say goodbye. They bade each other luck on their journey, and Raditz departed from the planet on his spaceship. Alright, let's go to Earth, you will love it there. There shouldn't be anyone there like Paragus who are stupid. Great. Splendid. Terrific. 
But Biddy picked up the container and lovingly hugged. He was like a little child unable to wait and play with his new toy. He turned around to go and summon Bu and have his revenge on those who opposed him before Vegeta stopped him. Don't you forget about giving me my power increase or you won't walk another step with my Kai. Sweat drooped from Babidi's wrinkly back in trepidation. He knew he was around as powerful as Deborah. So follow his order and do what he wants. Just you wait for Saiyan, your greed for power will be your downfall, yes. I nearly forgot. Here sit on his stool. He pulled out a stubby stool from out of nowhere and sat on a larger one. With Vegeta on the stool and Babidi on the chair, he was able to draw on the forehead of Vegeta more easily. Of course, there was another more forceful way to do it. But why use the mana and go through the trouble? There is very rarely someone who would willingly become a slave of his. Drawing his signature M on top of Vegeta's forehead, he did some magic chant to go after it. The symbol glowed for a brief second before merging in with Vegeta's enormous forehead. Once the symbol stopped glowing a rush of negative Kai rushed to invade Vegeta as quickly as they could. Flooding his body and integrating with his existing Kai, his Kai reserves exploded in quality and quantity. Busting open the door down with a fierce kick, he went outside to explore his new powers and decided whether or not it is enough. Mesa Babidi, are you not going to control him? Let him have a false sense of freedom. It will make his servitude much more bitter for him and sweeter for me. For not, we have a much bigger and better fish to fry. Rushing to the cocoon that Bu resided in and put the spout of the container inside a little hole in the egg. Pouring Vegeta rich Kai in there, the egg started to tremble and glow in response. They emptied their reserves just as the cocoon stopped moving. Like time was frozen and the cocoon adhered to it. A couple of more seconds go by and Babidi feels a sense of unease. Maybe we need more. Just as he said that the cocoon cracked once again straight down the middle splitting the two parts. Bang. A giant pink blob lurched out of the cocoon and stopped right in front of Babidi. He waited until he stopped wiping the cocoon remains that exploded on him. Babidi opened his eyes and felt his heart stop for a second. Boo. It bu. Hello bu. I am Babidi, the son of Babidi and your master. Master. Yes, your master. Bu frowned at the word knowing what it implied. Even with his simple mind, he would want it for himself and not for someone else to constantly have no master. He then proceeded to stick his tongue out in defiance. You think I wouldn't be able to control you? I know the sealing technique that got you into that ball. Maybe that ball was more comfortable for you than I thought. Bu put up his arms in defeat at the mere mention of those words. Those thousands of years were painfully boring to him. Deborah looked at Bu with some caution not satisfied with the way he was controlled. If this really was the Bu of legends, he could easily kill them, and he wouldn't be able to respond. Going outside to complete their conquest of the universe and destruction to those blasted case, they saw Vegeta testing out his power. He was just doing simple exercises of his muscles and Kai. He noticed the obvious power increase, but wasn't satisfied with such a small increase. He wouldn't be able to catch up to Goku with this. Whatever. I have no more business here. He flew up a few feet before a voice resounded within his mind. Vegeta, come to me. Babidi used his mind control to control Vegeta to come to him. When he didn't see Vegeta automatically come to him, he tried to exert his control once again. Come. Vegeta turned around making Babidi feel more reassured with his mind control until he saw the disdain on Vegeta's face. It was obvious that the mind control didn't work, and his will was much too powerful than Babidi expected. Shem PH should have expected something like this. Vegeta then launched a big bang attack straight towards Babidi. Before the attack could connect, Deborah stepped before Babidi and swatted the attack away. Vegeta, you dare attack our master after he gave you the power you seek. Master, I am the Prince of Saiyans. I have no master. The slight mention of being under someone made Vegeta's pride ruffled. No master. Bu was observing Vegeta's behavior and resistance. If he had lesser power than himself and refuses to concede, why should he? It seems to me need to be taught some manners. Deborah. Babidi restricted the power that Vegeta received from the mark. 
and had Deborah go after Vegeta. He gleefully accepted unable to handle the blasphemy that he tried to do by killing his master. Vegeta met Deborah mid-air and engaged in combat with the Demon King. While in his true Super Saiyan state, Deborah was at a disadvantage even with his Majin power increase. One could see he was beaten mercilessly by the Saiyan. Mabidi wore a grim expression seeing his faithful minion fail to accomplish his mission. His opinion of him fell off greatly. Turning around to Bu, he then commanded the pink blog to finish the fight quickly. But when he turned around, Buu's enormous face was straight in front of his surprising him a great deal. Buu, stop joking around and show them your power. When Buu didn't respond and proceeded to stare at the small gremlin, Babidi's short fuse blew out. Listen to me, you ingrate moron. Finish him off or I will seal you in that ball permanently. The threat didn't seem to stick well with Buu if one could expect from his frown. Suddenly, Bu smiled a smile of a devil. Me eat you. Wah dash before Babidi could react, the little antenna-like appendage on his head aimed at the small alien and shot forward a pink ray. Babidi's face of horror was frozen like a still frame before the next instant, where he turned into a chocolate bar. Happy with his new treat, he licked it all over before stuffing the whole thing in his mouth. Chewing on the tasty candy, he could feel the energy within it merge with his body. Sensing a drastic change to his body, it automatically blew steam from the pores from his head. Steam flew everywhere surrounding his body. Deborah and even Vegeta sensed something wrong because they were connected with Babidi through magic. The mark on Vegeta slowly disappeared until it faded out of existence. Meanwhile, the mark on Deborah sent him through mental and physical pain, before also disappearing. Because the control of Deborah through his brain and power was higher than that of Vegeta, he was affected negatively when it was removed. Vegeta ignored the plight the demon was in, and instead turned his attention towards the steam that was incusing Bu. Although he saw the pink blob earlier when confronted with the two assailants, he didn't really think much of the guy since his power level didn't seem to be that high. Now, however, he can see that Babidi's Kai was gone and Buu's was going through a transformation of sorts. Looking intently, the steam eventually parted giving something that made Vegeta scratch his head. Condensing into a smaller version of himself, one that was the size of Babidi. He was wearing an orange cape and blue skirt, similar to his master before. His physique looked similar to before, the fat before only condensed a little, giving him a look of a short plump ball. Nevertheless, he looked even less threatening than before. But Vegeta knew not the make light of the situation, if Babidi was actually absorbed, remembering what had transpired Irila. Deborah seemed to finally reoriented himself from the pain he was feeling. Looking down from the air, he saw the small Bu and remembered everything that had happened before. Of how Babidi controlled his will and how they released that monster. Babidi might not be here, but Bu being what his ultimate goal sufficed for Deborah to get revenge. Babidi you crazy magician, I will settle for exacting revenge on your beloved weapon. Eyes were as red as they were crazy, going in with full momentum giving no chance for any second thoughts as if he had any. He didn't get far before his head was racked with pain once again. The same pain before occurred except this time, Bu had his hands stretched out, seemingly inflicting the pain himself. After Bu seemed satisfied with his torture, his like Pinkatina once again pointed its direction at its victim. Deborah, who was able to see his fate howled in agony and despair for the last time before turning into a lollipop. Bu merely flicked his fingers, and the lollipop entered his mouth. He crunched the candy brutally and threw away the stick, as if it was a piece of trash. Feeling his body change once more, steam erupted from his holes encasing him. Vegeta this entire time was flying in the air still as a rock. Fear crept up to him like a tidal wave. He came over here in seek of more power, only to witness what he could only consider a torturous event. He may have not seen how Babidi was absorbed. But seeing how easily Deborah was absorbed, someone who was barely inferior to him, so easily shook his heart. Seeing the smoke fade away he prepared to leave. Out in the smoke, Buu's body had transformed into a slimer and more muscular version of himself. It looked like it took the appearance of Deborah's fit body. But Buu's cape and kilt remained asserting Babidi's dominance in the power chain. After seeing that, Vegeta didn't stick around for much longer and rocketed away. As much as it hurt his pride, he knew that his Kai had something to do with that monster. With only the Kai leaking out, he felt the tremendous power he had. 
fighting someone like that who had more in reserve was asking for a death wish. Yu was about to give Chase and taste something even more delicious than his other two snacks. But he then sensed something in the distance. Deborah and Babidi didn't really have or cared to use sensory type magic or techniques. But with both of their powers combined, he felt there was someone out there in the distance that was leagues stronger than him. Formulating a plan in his head, he concealed his Kai and launched himself into space. Two great evil minds in his head tipped the balance of morality in the negative direction. And combining the intellect of each being, Yu was able to increase his own by a large margin. Even if each mind didn't do well on its own, Vegeta looked behind him and was secretly relieved that Yu did not give chase. He didn't know where he went, but that didn't concern him too much. All he had in his mind was how to defeat such a monster. To do that, he had a hard time swallowing that he couldn't do it himself and had to enlist someone he demised. Hopefully he was back already. Lastly, this is the training area. I'm not sure if you need physical training more than others, but you can come here anytime you want. After waiting a few more minutes since they arrived on Earth, Broly woke up from his nap very confused. Chile helped explain to him where he was and who the people around him were making him relax a bit more. With his time with Chile all those months, his vocabulary improved a lot more than Goku expected. In no time, he was adjusted to the planet and Goku was giving him a tour. Naturally, he and Chile didn't stray too far from each other Kale, seeing another legendary Super Saiyan, quickly became friends with Broly. Chile immediately became defensive, but after learning Kale was with me, she turned out much nicer and understanding of their situation. How is this even possible for there to be two legendary Super Saiyans? In the book, it says nothing about it. Like I said Kale, the book isn't an end or be all. Maybe there was always meant to be a female and a male legendary Super Saiyan. Of course, Goku didn't really think this was the case. The reason Kale was here was undoubtedly having to do something with him. But even he is unable to see the consequences of his arrival with all his strength. Broly nodded quietly. For as strong and beefy the guy was, he was quite shy when meeting new people. Or maybe in general, everyone enjoyed some drinks and food welcoming their new companions. They didn't know where they were going to live for the time being. But such peace and tranquility was a rarity for them. So all they wanted to do was enjoy it. Goku and Broly were talking it out about the control of his powers. And Goku wanted him to set down the same path that Kale was currently on. With the two of them, they could help each other out and point out each other's flaws. Basically, perfect training partners. That was when there was a knock on the door, a one that eluded heaviness and importance. Goku told Broly to wait for him as he answered. But before he could even stand up, the person on the other side lost his patience and busted the door open. Goku quickly stood up and went to see who would do such a thing and found himself face to face with Vegeta. He didn't look too roughed up, but one could tell he had been in a fight. The look on his face was far from the usual menacing look and instead was one of prideful reluctance. If that was a thing, Vegeta, just because we are rich doesn't mean you can bust open the entire door. What is it? Shut it Kakarot, sit down and listen. Vegeta looked around the living room spotting a few new additions in the house, but ignored them to explain Goku the situation. From beginning to end, Goku had his eyes furrowed the moment Vegeta mentioned Deborah. After he ended the story, Vegeta sprouted out how absorbed Bu ventured out into space. Vegeta, you are smarter than that. Why did you allow them to use your Kai? What did you need from them? He could tell that Vegeta didn't tell them everything. It was too obvious. That doesn't matter right now. Tell me, what do you know about this creature? That creature, that creature was Bu, a universal threat. Vegeta's eyes were wide with horror. Back when he was still a prince, he heard about the history of Bu the Planet Destroyer. Seeing that he could absorb people for power as well as elevated his threat level exponentially. Take me to where you last saw him. Vegeta gritted his teeth and complied knowing that he fuck up this time. The pride that he once had, that he went on and on about for days, was a shell of what it used to be. Bu shouldn't have been released for a few years. But the butterfly effect right now is biting me in the ass. I don't know what the guy is up to. But I can conclude that his intelligence makes him so much more dangerous than any other iteration of himself. 
Who knows what he could be planning? Goku scoured the insides of the laboratory looking for anything that could help him. Even with the absorption of the extra two villains, he was confident that his current strength is leagues ahead. All he needed to do was find him. Easier said than done. Although Goku has been working on a technique for him to survive in space, he hasn't figured out the kinks yet. A couple of days have gone by from the time Vegeta broke the news, and it has been uneventful so far. Bomber has been working on building a tracker for Bu from the energy readings of his confined ball. But since his absorptions of two other living beings, it has changed and been harder to pin down. Vegeta got acquainted with the latest Saiyan in the team. All Goku could do right now is to better himself while also waiting for Kaishin to call him. Right after the inspection of the base of Babidi, Goku transferred the awful news to the Supreme Kai. His reaction wasn't pleasant, to say the least, and surprisingly cursed at Goku and Vegeta for doing something so reckless. After the rant, he scrambled to try and find the chaotic blob before it got out of hand. Goku come quickly, a voice resounding in Goku's mindscape surprising during his time private time with his girls. This better be worth it. I was just in good part. No time for your shenanigans, come now. With that, he turned off the mind link connecting them. Disgruntled at what could be so important, Goku found Shin's Kai and teleported to him. Shin looked like he hasn't eaten in weeks, and his face looking like it had aged several decades. What's the matter Shin? Surely Bu hasn't come here by still seeing you alive and all. Then you will be sorely mistaken, follow me. Shin led Goku to a special part of the sanctuary where he lived until they came upon a box. The box was like any other normal box, and Goku didn't recognize it at first, until Shin opened it. Inside it was revealed four green rings on the top in a row. On the bottom row, there was nothing. No silver time ring of the sort. This is the time ring. And as Shin was explaining what the time ring was and what it did, Goku's head was in a jumble. There is no way. I don't know how, but we weren't able to detect Bu at all. And when I did my routine check, it was just gone. And how do you know it's Bu? Shin raised his hand that contained a note. It was in the box. The note was just good Bu's face with his tongue sticking out in a mocking fashion, absorbing the Biddy's memories which had memories of Badidi, probably knew of the time ring and its uses. But if Bu was here, why would he not absorb Kibito and Shin then? Surely Babidi's intellect would want him to. Of course. The clue was in the note. Since in this timeline, good Bu is still contained inside even with two evil minds, he has some shred of morality. If he absorbed Kibito and Shin, it will tip the morality scale to 2v3 on the good side. Eat. Kabito who was behind Supreme Kai exclaimed in surprise. Both Goku and Kaishin turned to look at what the fuss was about. Their eyes followed Kabito's towards the box to see a fuzzy outline of a fifth green time ring. No 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 no. Shin was muttering to himself. When the fifth time ring materialized itself next to the other four, all of their backs had cold sweat permeating from their pores. Goku especially had a terrible feeling. This gut-wrenching feeling that you can do nothing about. He needed to do something, or else this feeling would stay longer than he would like. Walking out wordlessly, he went to the open area. Shin and Kabito assumed he needed a breath of fresh air for thinking. This was a huge blunder after all. With Bu in possession of a time ring, he could effectively go into the future and absorb the strong fighters then becoming stronger than ever. Shin needed to call the destroyer god Beerus for help in a situation this massive. Luckily, the time rings are restricted to only traveling to the future. Traveling to the past with them is virtually impossible. All he needed to do is alert Beerus and whisk about the situation. Then any time in the future that pink head decides to pop up in, the future G.O.D. and Angel would already know to look out for him. With this, it would restrict Bu greatly from creating chaos in the future. At least, that is what Shin learned when becoming a Supreme Kai. He never actually used the time rings before, as it was wholly unneeded, with its only function is looking into the future. Using his telepathy, he knocked on Beerus's mental door. As usual, he was asleep, no big surprise there. So he knocked on a much friendlier door as his second option. This door was always open. Whis, thanks Sino you are available. 
Tragic news has befallen us that we must attend to with the utmost urgency. Currently the entire building they were in shook with great vigor. Dust fell from the roof of the interior, indicating that the integrity of the building was likely damaged from such an intense shake. Excuse me whis, something is going on outside. It'll just be for a second. Not wanting to be rude, Shen left the call on hold and went outside to see what that Saiyan was doing. For all he knew, Pyu could have faked them out and returned to this timeline already. Unknown to him, Whis was a curious fellow by nature. Sitting at his table, he put down his teacup and fiddled with the orb on top of his star for a little. It took less than a second for an image to show up like television broadcasting. What is unfolding in the sacred land of case? Looking outside, all he saw was Goku carrying the Zed sword. Oh, he is probably training in preparation to fight Bu. A logical thought coming from the Supreme Kai. Unfortunately, he forgot that you can't apply logic to the being known as Goku. Shen was going to go back to his call, until another shake happened right next to him with greater force. Startled at what kind of training he was going through with that sword, he soon found out that there was no training at all. Goku was swinging the sword straight into the ground. It didn't look like he wanted to cut the ground as he was swinging it with the sharp edges facing outward, not touching a single blade of grass. Like a hammer, he kept on smacking it on the ground. If Kaoshin didn't know any better, he would have thought Goku was trying to break the indestructible Zed Sword. Much to his relief, Goku stopped after a few more hits looking awfully confused with the sword. Before Shin could ask any questions, Goku powered up directly to his Super 8 form. Although not much time has passed since he last used it, Goku never stops training. Whether he is spending time with his family or tending to some other matters, a Saiyan such as himself keeps on going never losing the motivation to get strong. He held the sword up horizontally and lifted up his knee, placing the sword on top of it. Without Kachin, he had to improvise. Being weaker than Kachin by a significant margin if Goku remembered their interaction with each other, he held confidence he could break it with his power. Wait Goku what are you doing? Strange, why is he doing that? Shen and Whis shared their thoughts on the matter, but all they could do is watch as Goku broke the swords back into pieces. The Eastern Supreme Kai was on his knees with his mouth gaping open. He resembled a fish as his mouth opened and closed as many times as he saw a piece of the metal fly before his eyes. The Zed Sword, why would you do that? One of the only times Goku experienced the rage of the Shin the Supreme Kai, rarely has he ever been angry. There is nothing to be angry about, and with his natural temperament, getting him mad was an achievement by itself. Ignoring the achievement that Goku gained, he had to explain the seemingly insane thing he just did right now. Do you know what you have done son Goku? You took out one of our options in dealing with this existential threat. Shen knowing about the Zed Sword only by myths and legends was misled that it could be a weapon to take down Bu. Magical properties perhaps that negated Bu's regeneration factor. Maybe, but he would never know that because it is in pieces acting no more than broken glass by your feet. I you. Shin couldn't speak properly. He was at loss for words. Thankfully, he didn't need to speak anymore before he got interrupted by mysterious laughter behind his back. Hehe, <laughs> that feels good. Looking behind him as if he was looking out for a ghost, he saw an old wrinkly man stretching out his limbs, as if that did something to benefit him in any way. Phew, that was a long time. Oh hello there. W who are you? This is the sacred land of the case, you can't be here. Who do you think you are talking to? Sheesh, young Kai these days have no manners and no knowledge to boot. The elderly Kai grumbled in response. He was finally released from his prison to get shouted by a youngster. What a warm welcoming. I am a supreme Kai can't you tell? From my rocking hairstyle to my fit body. Can't you tell this is what you will become when you grow older? I'm at my prime baby. Ha ha ha. What? The appearance of the older Kai completely washed away the agonizing memory of Goku, breaking the Zed Sword into a pleasant but still confusing one. After talking to the old Kai come more about the past and how he got sealed, Shen turned to Goku for some answers. How did you know that esteemed elder was trapped inside of the sword? Is that why you broke it? Well Goku's eyes diverted a bit. I felt something was off about the Zed Sword. While it was sharp and heavy, it didn't seem to live up to its name as the legends you told me about. I also have a feeling that there was something deeper within, so I took the risk. I see I have to thank you some Goku. If you had not done that, 
Who knows how much longer esteemed elder would be trapped in his prison. I apologize for getting angry with you earlier. Don't mention it's Supreme Kai, but let's not get sidetracked. Let's ask Elder Kai if he knows anything that could help us. Of course, of course. After explaining the situation of Bu to Elder Kai, he understood the gravity of it all. You dimwit, how could you not protect such important tools? and let it get stolen by Bu. Apparently, Elder Kai lived such a long time ago that he also knew the notorious Majin Bu and the power he possessed. Please, Elder Kai, help us solve this issue. Hum, if what you are telling me is correct, then this is serious. Normally, only Supreme Case can use the Time Ring. You can only use it without being one if you shared a Patara earring with another Kai. But I highly doubt any sane Kai would agree to associate with Bu, leaving the only option I could think of. Bu, when absorbing the two Supreme Kai in the fight you described long ago, gained their properties and status as a Kai. Of course. How could I not think of that? Shin and Goku thought at the same time. If he has the same status as Akai, he wouldn't need a Patara earring to travel through time. However, this still doesn't explain why there is a fifth green time ring. If you use a time ring, you can only go to the future not creating any alternate timelines. As they were discussing, another watchful eye was peeping in their conversation. But he wasn't paying attention to what they were saying but to a certain individual. Interesting fellow. Despite its best efforts, it can't escape my vision. This soul doesn't belong here. In the atmosphere of Earth, so this is where they are at. That pink blob better not lie to me. I cannot fail this time. Never again. What an interesting human. Unfortunately, I can't observe his soul in more detail and find out more about it through this proverbial looking glass. I would have to go to him to find out the truth. With Lord Beerus sleeping like a cat, who knows then I will have the time to do so. The angel was squinting his eyes at the orb a little longer, but ultimately decided to put it down and return to drinking his tea. He had plenty of time to investigate later. For now, pastries and tea before Beerus wake up. So what you are saying is that Bu will be forced to come back to this timeline no matter what. Goku was following old Kai's logic, and by all means, it sounds correct. Indeed, with Beerus and Whis tracking the ring at any time Bu goes to the future, he will be forced back into this time. As long as Shin gets to it and informs them. Ah, uh, yes, right away. How do you know Beerus will be awake at that time? Doesn't he always sleep at the worst moments? Indeed, that is the case. However, with something important as a time ring interfering with the timeline, he will be forced to stop it with all his efforts, unless he wants to get erased by Omni King. Shin went back to his call with Whis who pretended to be on wait the entire time. Shin asked for their help, but unfortunately, for now, Beerus was sleeping and couldn't do anything. I guess it is time for me to head back, since all we can do is wait. See you next time Elder Kai. Next time I am here, I will have company. Hopefully, you can unlock some of their powers. He needed to get back with his family right away to make sure everything was fine. The ascension to Super Saiyan God has also been delayed for way too long. The power that he would gain from such a simple method was one he needed if he was going against such a cunning Bu. The five Saiyans he needed were simple, even more so now that the two Saiyan girls are present. Holding two fingers onto his forehead, he used instant transmission to teleport back to his house. Arriving on the couch with 18 lazing around watching TV, it was such a dramatic change from a tense situation to such a relaxed one. Oh hey Goku, want some? 18 gave Goku a sharp look and held out some buttered up popcorn that she had on her lap. Goku always wondered if 18 could loosen up her facial expressions at all, but was wise enough not to ask that. Do you know where Cauliflower and Kale are? I need to ask them something. Those two, they went out shopping I think. Goku raised an eyebrow at the android that was lazying around on the couch. There weren't many things that one would need to satisfy the young droid. Stability and some excitement were some core factors, and being with Goku there was an endless supply. So endless that it loses some of its lusters over time making 18 enjoy the simpler things. And you aren't with them. Don't you love shopping? Yeah, for the first few times, it gets boring after a while. Besides, I'm not carrying my own bags. Goku's eye twitched a couple of times, while 18 knowing smirked. He couldn't help but get PTSD about the last time he went shopping with 18, only to see about a fourth of the entire trip, since there were bags covering his eyes. He shook his head and went to talk to the other two girls, 
before taking off towards Vegeta's Kai signature. Knowing that they would only get mad at him if they interrupted what they were doing, he went to seek Vegeta first. Since technically Kale and Broly were not Super Saiyans, they couldn't participate in the ritual. Fortunately, Bomber, Chichi, and Cauliflower had a baby cooking in the oven. He didn't know how long each one was till due, but by the estimates by the doctor, they were still in their first trimester. Vidal, when she participated, was a couple of months ahead of those three. But hopefully, it would still work. If not, he could always call Raditz instead of waiting. That man did a complete 180 in Goku's mind. He had nearly no faith that he would reach Super Saiyan no matter his heritage. But he managed to surprise him. After telling Vegeta his plans, he agreed and came along. Goku noticed something different with Vegeta's demeanor but spoke nothing of it. It was true, Vegeta had a lot of time to think, and the more he thought the more the strong pillar he called pride, looked fragile before him. He couldn't shake the feeling that something that defines him wholly, or at least that is how he felt, was being replaced since coming to this backwater planet. From meeting Goku to meeting Tights, that wall of pride couldn't keep up with their consistent hammering. Coming back to the compound, it looks like it was the right call to get Vegeta first, since it seemed that Cauliflower and Kale were already back. Yeah, we have been lacking a fifth and proper Super Saiyan for the longest time, which is why we didn't do the ritual. But now there are so many and more to come. They all got into formation for the ritual with Goku at the center. Bulma was the first to nervously go up as the fifth participating member, and held her two children's hands. Vegeta and Cauliflower put their hands on Goku's back, and inserted their power as vague as it sounded. To everyone's disappointment, nothing happened. As I thought, Bomber rotated with Chichi, but none of them worked. It was obvious that the fifth spot was the faulty one, not to the fault of the girls. All right, I am going to get Raditz. Be right back. Goku closed his eyes and teleported first to Supreme Kai's place. He didn't really speak with the two Kai again, since they already knew what he came there for. Focusing on the direction Raditz left last time, he was able to spot the familiar Kai of his brother out in the vastness of space. Instantly transmitting to his location, he was fighting a hug green-like creature. The fight was intense with the creature spitting out various acids that did different effects on each rocket landed on. You can tell that Raditz really loved the thrill of the battle and the situation he was in. Goku didn't want to rip him away from this so fast, but it's not like he will be gone for long. Waiting for a little, he started to get a little impatient since he told everyone back at home that he wasn't going to take long. Hey Raditz, we need you back on Earth. He didn't want to interrupt, but he was on a schedule. Seeing Goku in the distance, he only acknowledged him with a slight nod. Charging his hands with vibrant purple energy, he fired Double Sunday to end the battle quickly. The dual beams of death landed on the creature drilling into his very being. Both pierced its chest with two gaping holes. Breathing its last breath, it collapsed with a thud on the ground. Raditz didn't pay it any mind, nor the local residents that went to inspect. If the monster that was terrorizing them really was dead. Is it an emergency? Kinder sorta. Rolling his eyes, he packed up all of his things and led Goku to his spaceship. Understanding what he wants, he used instant transmission with all of Raditz's things in tow. Returning back to the house in one piece, Goku called everyone back outside to continue the ritual. Alright, let's do it this time. Goku started to explain what was happening to Raditz and what they were going to do. Although Raditz didn't quite know the gravity of the situation, he can assume that it was heavy, so he agreed. Returning to the open area where they first tried the transformation, they got back into position. Well, well looky here, I was going to find and kill that Raditz character first, but it looks like you brought him here. Now all of you tainted Saiyans are here, I can finally kill you myself. You. That was Goku's initial thought but quickly discarded it from his voice and choice of words. Looking up into the sky, all the Saiyans encountered something they couldn't quite explain. It was as if the person before them was someone on a different level, someone who they couldn't help but bow and acknowledge. The overbearing pressure didn't sway Goku from looking up at the culprit and was shocked at what he saw, something that he himself had unfamiliar territory in. The flying one bore a striking resemblance to Vegeta and his father before him. He had rugged clothes like he just participated in a fight of the ages, 
The sharp features on his face couldn't mask the amount of hatred that permeated from his body directed at the Saiyans. His hair was red like the blood that stained his shirt. The eyes that downed on the crew was the most intimidating. The red eyes swept across everyone as if he could peer into their soul. Who dares interrupt this important ritual? And why do you look like me? Vegeta was dumbstruck, the person in front of him looked exactly like him. Only if his Super Saiyan transformation turned him red instead of gold. Who am I? Impudent. The figure glared at them with the signature Vegeta glare. That Goku couldn't help but laugh at. They both turned their gaze onto him at such an untimely laugh. What? I couldn't help it. My name is Yamoshi. First to transcend to a higher being of Saiyan. The one that will finish what I started long ago exterminating this savageness from this world. Yumoshi? But how? There is no way for him to be here. In this timeline, Bulma didn't even create her time machine. And like Grand Kai said, the time rings can't go back in time HMPH, Yumoshi. I don't understand what you are doing here. But you just wearing my face while spewing that crap got me riled up. Not underestimating his opponent for even a second, Vegeta powered up to true Super Saiyan. Exclamation point question mark the Saiyan God had a shocked look on his face. Impossible how can you achieve that transformation? Super Saiyan, the first Saiyan transformation that his race has discovered and one that he achieved first. He thought that besides himself and his companions, no one else could achieve it, especially a descendant of him. If they somehow grasped a method to transform to such a power with their nature, they must be exterminated with haste. The killing intent skyrocketed out of Yamashi, and he rushed towards Vegeta, while Vegeta did the same. The two of them collided mid-air, but the result was quite clear when Vegeta ricocheted off of him like a pebble in the capsule core building. Yamashi had a smirk on his face as Vegeta stood up from the rubble rubbing the blood away from his mouth. Still, it isn't enough to beat me. Vegeta was about to rush in again to regain some semblance of pride, but Goku stopped him. Wait Vegeta, that person, he is a Super Saiyan God. Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Everyone in the venue had varying faces of shock, horror, and curiosity. Vegeta in particular had a grim expression on his face, while Yamashi looked over to Goku in amusement. This one seems to be one of integrity and calmness. However the case, he must still be killed. Goku didn't know why Yamashi was here, but clearly, he couldn't let him roam free. Understanding his Saiyan history, Yumoshi was the original Super Saiyan and Super Saiyan God, and was the opposition in the Saiyan Civil War that forced them off of their planet to planet Sadala. This was probably the reason why he wants to kill the descendants to settle the grudge however he saw fit. Why don't we take this somewhere else? Believe it or not, there are billions of innocent creatures roaming this land. If we fight, I'm afraid they would be caught in the crossfire. He didn't know if his strongest transformation would be enough to fight against the god, but he vividly remembered the battle of gods. He didn't want Earth to be in the proximity of the match. Sure, where do you propose? Once again, the respect Yumoshi showed Goku increased, but he steeled his resolve in seeing this through. Touch my hand. Goku stretched out his hand. As everyone expected, Yumoshi hesitated a bit. He was surrounded by enemies on all sides so he could easily be blindsided. Although he achieved tremendous power, he hasn't nor will lose his vigilance like a true warrior. Goku saw what was going through his mind and retracted all his power. Not one speck of defense nor hostility was shown making him completely naked in terms of defense. If Yamashi wanted to, he could easily launch a sneak attack close and fatally damage Goku. But Goku was convinced that not a normal person could become a Super Saiyan God. His eyes darted back and forth as he slowly approached the standing Goku. He seemed to be thinking something, but ultimately placed his hand on Goku as he wanted. Smiling, Goku used instant transmission to teleport to the sacred world of Case. The moment they arrived, Yumoshi separated from Goku in a millisecond and observed his surroundings. We are in a place full of Divine Kai. Such a grand technique to be able to teleport. Using his great senses, he was able to figure out that he was many light years away from they were original. Before we start, may I ask why you are here? Your presence here disrupts many laws of this world. A strange pink creature offered me the opportunity to exact my revenge many millennials later. After I was defeated of course, comma, I will take it. Or my spirit would not be able to rest. Pink creature you mean Bu. It matters not. I do not care the name of the creature. 
He presented me with a great opportunity, and I decided to take it. Enough talk. You don't seem like a descendant of his, but I will kill you all the same. Goku vowed to get to the bottom of this. Even though it's supposed to be impossible, Gyu manages to do it and bring Yumoshi with him. Even if the energy around Yumoshi was chaotic as if it threatened to bring him back any time, much damage was already done. It was as if this universe adjusted the more power he got quicker. Even with power imaginable at this current age, the universe runs and keeps him on a leash by giving him ludicrous opponents. Goku powered up to Super Ape, making Yumoshi contort his face like he swallowed a bug. It doesn't matter. If the universe didn't adjust to me it would be too boring. Well, there they go. Bomber shielded her eyes from the sun while looking into the sky. That was enough excitement for the day. Everyone started to return to their normal routine completely faithful that Goku would stop that mysterious person. Hey Broly, would you like to keep on training? Sure. Broly like all new additions to the crew found himself welcome warmly and integrated seamlessly. The same happened with Chilai. Her nature to be out in space doing whatever she wanted was temporarily subdued with the wonders of Earth that the other girls showed her. Kale and Broly regularly trained together in hopes of controlling their transformations better. They never thought to see someone like them, so they capitalized on the opportunity every chance they could. They have been making better progress than with Goku all by themselves almost reaching a controlled Super Saiyan state. As everyone went back to what they were doing, they didn't notice the conspicuous pink blob disguising himself with expert magic. He was eyeing them since the start of the encounter with Yamashi. With Yamashi distracting everyone, he was able to sneak by even the eyes of Goku. He closed his eyes to process the information that he attained to make the best move possible. His gaze finally looked towards where Kale and Broly were departing with greed-filled eyes. After he confirmed that the straggler Vegeta left to train harder than ever, he slowly started to drift in their direction. Back in the sacred land of Case, Goku and Jumosi barely started their fight, but it felt like it would last forever considering the shockwaves that were dispersing throughout the planet. Goku notified Shin beforehand, and had him go to a safe distance and watch. Luckily, the world was sturdy being able to survive the blows that were being exchanged on it by two godly level beings. This was the first time since Cell that Goku felt inferior in power. He could understand it then when Cell absorbed 21 who was from the future, but someone from the past. A stray punch was thrown at Goku's face, and he caught it with his cheek. Falling back he threw three Kai blasts in succession to slow Yamashi's rush. It was no avail as he smoothly deflected the Kai balls too exploded behind him. When Yamashi got close, Goku launched a kick to his sternum. Yamashi dodged the straightforward strike, and with impeccable speed and accuracy, punched Goku in the solar plexus. He narrowly blocked the punch with his hand and counterattacked with a headbutt. Since they were in such close proximity, Yamashi couldn't dodge and was pushed back. Goku was barely holding on with his inferior power despite his training every day. If he wasn't interrupted by Yamashi, he would have been able to complete the Super Saiyan God transformation and the level of power would not have been the same. It was no use in lamenting past events as he readied up for more brutal exchanges. But noticed Yamashi stopped for a second. That transformation it is weaker than his. I wonder why. He was able to defeat me while he has no chance no matter how much you struggle. Chance. This was a chance to delve deeper into the lore of Dragon Ball. As a true fan, he had to persuade Yamashi to keep going. Who are you talking about that achieved this transformation? As far as I know, I am the first to do so. Seems like the destruction of your planet lost the annals of knowledge. I will tell you now young Saiyan and so listen well. About my rival and the person who defeated me and left me to die in space. How could you side with them after everything that they have done? This new transformation just proves it. That you are on the wrong side. Right or wrong, it doesn't matter now. Once I defeat you, your legacy will be removed from the annuals of time. You will be forever looked upon as the villain. Yamashi was backed into a corner. He had tried his hardest with his new Super Saiyan God transformation to reform the Saiyan society. But even with it, he has been pushed to his limit. His comrades that helped him achieve the new form were all captured. Their group labeled as traitors to their own race. The civil war was a long one, and the grudge that the current savage society that Yumoshi grew up with started very young. As the son of the current king, he was granted many privileges as he grew up. He held a somewhat eventful and content life with his mother, father, and brother. 
he would fight in his free time and spend time with his family for the rest. Monitoring his people's needs with his dad, playing around with his brother, or helping his mother with other things. Of course, the standard of the Saiyan race wasn't great. Communities and cities would be scattered far from each other, and with the Saiyan's attitudes, they weren't really one for bonding. Their technology barely reached the standard for space travel. But even so, they liked their simple lives. If his life was so perfect, what could make him possibly hate on them so? It was one evening when Yomoshi was playing with his group of friends. Five to be precise, and despite Saiyan's nature to not form bonds, these friends had a tight-knit relationship. All of their personalities rubbed off of each other, making them laugh and express happiness whenever they got together. Yomoshi, father is calling you back to the house. There is something you need to hear. His brother interrupted his time with his friends. His cold stare bore through them all reminding them that their personalities were different than the average Saiyan. Returning home with his brother, he knelt before his father who was on his throne. Father, come, come with me. Turning his back to Yamoshi, he led him to the small medical that was in the side of his home. Having a confused expression throughout the entire trip, his father kept looking back at him from time to time to make sure he was following. Entering the medical room, the image of his damaged mother lay before him. He rushed to her side to inspect her, to ask her what was wrong. Mother, are you alright? What happened? Son, your mother passed away earlier today. What? Tears erupted from his eyes like a tidal wave. They fell off his face like rain in stormy weather as he turned to his father, who still had a cold expression on his face. He looked as if he wanted an explanation, so his father provided him one. Your mother lost a duel. Since she was weaker and started the fight, it is her own fault that she lost. What? We must get revenge. Those those savages can't get away like this. Thud. Yamashi held his cheek that was caved in from where his father punched him. The tears forcibly stopped producing, but kept rolling down his cheeks as he looked up at his father. Wipe your face, those tears are unsightly. As I said, she lost to no fault but her own. Revenge. It is already humiliating that she lost. There is no need to sully our pride more. It was the only reason I married her, you best remember that. It seems she stopped training after having you too. Such a foolish woman. He couldn't believe what he was hearing. He knew that Saiyan had their emotions in check. But how could you show contempt to your dead wife for losing? How far has this society fallen for this to happen? The 16-year-old boy couldn't take it anymore. His race was a lost cause. They dare kill their own for what? They have no remorse, and from the way their king acted, it didn't seem to stop anytime soon. He had to do it. He had to be the one who changed society. By the only method these savages knew. By force. His hair started turning golden. His eyes started to change color. His father didn't notice anything amiss until the room started to shake like an earthquake. And like a bomb, he exploded. The golden kai that surrounded them burst out destroying the medical room that they were in. Somehow, the bed that had his mother did not get disturbed. His figure started to slowly rise in the air above the castle that his family lived in. Using his newfound powers, his voice echoed all across planet Sadala stating his intentions. People of the Saiyan race, my name is Yumoshi and I hereby condemn you all. Through the unspeakable actions of many, our ways as a race are too violent. One without thought and only fighting. I will change our ways, listen to me, and we will forge a new path to our future. One of prosperity and peace. Yamashi gave his speech for all to hear. He intended for Saiyans like him, one with emotions, to rise and help him educate the word empathy to the rest. However, even after experiencing the loss of his mother, the family member that he was closest to, he underestimated what the Saiyan race truly was. No one was with him. It was him against the world. In response, many Saiyans from the army and even civilians pushed back against his forceful decree. But under his new power, he was sitting comfortably above them in power. Luckily for the Saiyans, that day was one of a full moon. In planet Sadala, unlike its similar counterparts, its moon became full every few days. Saiyans would also use it to do massive scale fights, compared to the ones they were doing before. Under the effect of the full moon, the Saiyans transformed into great apes, giving them a fighting chance. With their big lumbering bodies, even with the 10x power boost, the Super Saiyan Yumoshi easily beat them down. That was when someone that he for sure thought was on his side came before him. Brother, you are planning a revolution. For what? 
The simple death of another female Saiyan, compared to the countless others before her who suffered the same fate. Stop this instant. His brother appeared before him, older by many years. The combat experience he garnered surpassed Yamoshi by miles. Aiming to be the next king, the young prodigy was respected by many in the army and staff. You to brother. Do you not feel anything over mother's death? It seems I have to defeat you too. Yumoshi didn't care about the combat experience. With his new power, he could easily destroy him even if he turned into a great ape. His brother's gaze hardened. All hesitation was gone. Not turning around to look at the full moon, he started to transform by himself. Fur sprouted all across his body coating him in hair. Markings were etched into his facial features making him look wilder. Yumoshi didn't account for this to happen. He like everyone underestimated his brother's genius. He was able to condense the Great Ape transformation into something more compact, bolstering his strength by manifold. This marked the first battle of the Civil War. It ended with a tie as Yumoshi fled the scene, unable to hold his Super Saiyan transformation any longer. Living like an outcast, outside the cities planning his next attack. Eventually, the friends from before came to him to help him. They too felt the same way he did, and they became a resistance force. A thorn to the Empire's side. One side was a brother filled with pain, righteousness, and a determination for a better future. Another was a brother filled with fighting spirit, loyalty, and the weight of his race on him. They both represented a side and frequently fought against each other. Due to the nature of Yamashi's side, one by one, all five friends were able to achieve Super Saiyan. The other side was slowly having a massive disadvantage. They had to keep using power balls in every fight, exhausting elite members to fend off the attacks. With their massive army and tactics, they weren't beaten too bad. Leader, we can't keep doing this. Their numbers are too big. No matter how much power we have, they outnumber us way too much. I don't think we can keep this up longer. The other members of the group agreed to what he said. They were getting tired and running out of resources to keep fighting with no results. Haven't you all noticed anything strange about this transformation the more you use it? Like it is incomplete. I feel like I am missing something at the castle. Congratulations my liege. We can finally put an end to this civil war now that you mastered their transformation. The king opened and released his grip feeling his new power. His father, Yumoshi's father, is long past since Yumoshi unlocked his power and blew up the medical room making him king. No wonder he could beat me easily. After Yumoshi grew and grew, his brother could no longer beat him on his own. It was a great deal of embarrassment that he had to use his army to help fend them off as well. This will not work. Question mark question mark question mark his royal advisor revealed a puzzled expression from his outburst. From what I gathered, this newfound power would barely let me stand toe to toe with my brother. I need something stronger. I will be on the training grounds. Don't interrupt me unless another attack happens. Both brothers in the midst of finding new power in hopes of ending the war quicker. They didn't have to wait long for their breakthrough. Just a day later, the revolution group launched another attack. In confidence in succeeding, they attacked what they didn't attack since the very start of the war. The castle. The castle shook as Yumoshi in his Super Saiyan form, launched a Kai blast at the infrastructure. Come out brother, this is the end. The king could be seen flying through the hole on the top, where the attack was situated at. He was already in his ape transformation. Both brothers held the eyes of each other for a minute until Yamoshi spoke. This is truly the end. I have reached a power you cannot hope to achieve. He screamed at the top of his lungs in true Saiyan style. The golden hair around him started to corrupt and turn red. His previously memorizing eyes turned blood red. The aura he gave off put so much pressure on everyone on the battlefield, even his teammates. I got this transformation yesterday. Unfortunately, my friends were unable to achieve it as well, since they lack the power to handle it. No matter, with this power, this war is as good as over. When he looked into his brother's eyes, he didn't see a look of fear or hatred, but one of contempt. Impatient as usual brother, I can tell you are highly unstable in that form. Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. It was true, he didn't know how much longer he could sustain the transformation. I will show you a true transformation. Screaming like his brother, the brown hair around him started to turn red. His eyes transformed into one of a true ape. Unbridled with power and rage, he had a look of a true god killer. Yamashi's eyes widened in response. He truly did not expect this. 
However, like Yumoshi, his brother only got this transformation yesterday. By easily combining two existing transformations, he didn't know long he could last. It was the battle of the ages. The entire planet shook in response. The fights of the other Super Saiyans and apes were on hold to watch the battle of the brother above. It was close, but one side was victorious. Yumoshi was heaving holding his left hand in pain. It didn't respond to his commands as he felt dread climb up his spine. With their leader down, it was easier to capture the other Saiyans. How could you side with them after everything that they have done? This new transformation just proves it. That you are on the wrong side. Right or wrong, it doesn't matter now. Once I defeat you, your legacy will be removed from the annuals of time. You will be forever looked upon as the villain. It was the end his own brother was planning to kill him. No, it couldn't end like this. I will take you in this rotten race with me. Using the last dredges of his power, he simulated his Kai similar to the Super Saiyan explosion when he first got his powers. But this time, with Divine Kai, it was many times bigger. Big enough to consume the planet. The king realized this familiar process and spoke to his generals quickly. Escape. Use the space pods and escape to the nearest habitable planet. But king now, it's too late. A sphere of Kai encircled him threatening to burst out in any moment. No, I will hold it off. The king, feeling obliged to his people, stretched out his hands. He forcibly pushed against the sphere of destruction and contained it. It was obvious he couldn't hold it for long, but spaceships were already departing the planet. No, I, I have failed my mission. Those who have tainted blood will still live while I perish. I am sorry, mother. Yumoshi closed his eyes. In a few seconds, he could explode as he felt that his brother couldn't hold on for much longer. His eyes furrowed in confusion when he didn't go off. He could no longer hear any sound. Opening his eyes, he saw that his world has frozen over. The Kai around him was as calm as the ocean. Wondering what was going on, he heard a voice behind him. Would you like to take revenge? He turned around, a purple portal appeared out of nowhere. It was small and was inside his Kai of impending doom. A pink hand popped out like a zombie out of its grave. Revenge on those who wronged you. Looking inside the portal, he could see a red eye stared back at him. Come to the future and kill those filthy Saiyans. I will. He reached out and grabbed that hand. It pulled him inside the portal, although it was small enough to fit a cup. He disappeared into the future as the sphere of destruction continued its rampage to destroy the planet. Yumoshi opened his eyes confused as to what happened. All he remembers is staring into the abyss, only for the abyss to pull him in instead of only staring back. The air around him seemed stifled, muddied. He didn't know if that was just his divine senses making him more attuned with the world, and therefore making him feel this way, or if the place the demon grabbed him was just like this. Yumoshi deactivated Super Saiyan God, but even so, the air around him seemed to suffocate him, as if it wasn't meant for living creatures. He looked around the hut he was in. It was very bare with only walls meeting his vision. He didn't even sleep in a bed but on the hard floor of the house. It was as if the house was only there for decoration and not living. Walking outside, he felt the coldness of space, then saw the pink blob that granted his passage here meditating on the floor. His small clothes levitated as did he like he was in his own world. Then it just stopped, feeling like the silence could kill him if it went on for any longer. Yamoshi spoke up first. Who are you? And is what you promised true? Hehe, he, I go by many names. But you can call me Bu. And yes, indeed, I brought you here to aid me. Bu gave off the feeling of creepiness that Yamoshi couldn't put his hand on. However, this had to be put on hold for now, since Bu saved him. It was not like he was a prosecutor of justice nor the like. At heart, he was a Saiyan. Just with a little more emotion. I need your help to punish these wicked Saiyans. Their barbaric nature has gone and nearly killed me at every turn. I heard about you and you are the perfect person to help me. Bibidi Hibu absorbed had the knowledge of Bibidi, a master of magic. Understandably, he had a wealth of knowledge at his disposal using every advantage he could get. Wicked Saiyans, you said that this is the future. He could feel it, the deceit and cruelty underlying Bu's words. But like it was mentioned before, even if Bu was evil, it didn't matter to him. All that matters is killing his accursed brother's ancestors. Their evil ways have to come to an end if he can't change them. I don't know why I was able to jump to his time period and reach him. Every time I try to go to the future with this right, 
That destroyer god and his pet are also there to greet me. The time of Yamoshi was unstable, likely because of the scale of the event, or because someone's time traveled there making a distortion. Yamoshi, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. The time portal that I brought you through was very unstable, and therefore able to have you stay longer, but at most it would only last three days. Do what you can for these three days, and you will be warped back to your original position, most likely inside the explosion you created destroying yourself. Gyu literally gave the time of his death down to the seconds. It didn't phase the Saiyan however, as he left to other information on the current situation of Saiyans. With him distracting Goku, eating up his stragglers would be a piece of cake. Do not listen to Buu. You have been tricked. The battle has been going on for 10 minutes, and Goku was at his limit. He activated Kaiken, but at this rate, he would need Senzu beans to keep up. That is always a bad sign. Are you saying you are not descendants of the original King Vegeta? Well I wouldn't say that let's just say I don't look like him okay. That didn't deter Yamashi one bit as he kept his fierce assault. This was the first time he fought an ancient Saiyan, naturally. So all of Yamashi's moves and fighting techniques threw him off guard. Goku slid back and made one a rope out of Kai and expertly wrapped Yamashi's torso. Pulling back, Yamashi started to spin the air a bit. Believing him to be disoriented, he went up to approached only for several Haywire Kai blasts to get launched everywhere. Yamashi turned into a mini tornado dishing out Kai blast. Goku had to deflect each one until a large one came out. Thinking it was the last attack of the barrage, he stopped it with his hands in order to attempt to bring it back. He didn't get far when the Kai blast was cut through, as Yumoshi was hiding behind it, and aimed for Goku's throat. He couldn't avoid the lethal blow, so he turned his head as much as he could. The blow hit Goku's throat at a strange angle, not utilizing its potential. Goku fell back rubbing the side of his neck in pain. Why do you even want to kill us? Several hundred years have passed since you last seen a Saiyan. How do you know that we are as vicious as we once were? They had a lengthy conversation while they were fighting. One would wish it was able to weather in such important topics. But that would be saved for another time. That transformation is a sign. A sign that you are similar to him. That you draw your power from the same source as him. That is all I need. You are way too narrow-minded. Each of their head-on exchanges shook the world. Shock wave after shock wave rocketed the planet they were on. The entire universe felt the effects like they did long ago. Rumble. 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 Who dares wake me up? A grumpy old cat woke up from his slumber all cranky. He looked around and found that his alarm didn't go off, and nothing unnatural occurred. So in the most normal fashion started to snore again. Rumble. That snot bubble was popped by another rumble, and at this point, he couldn't go back to sleep. Angrily jumping out of the bed, he put on his clothes and headed outside to see what the commotion was about. Whis. What is happening? Oh dear my lord, looks I lost the bet that you wouldn't wake up when this was happening. Who did you bet with? Myself. The feeling of winning and losing at the same time is quite unique. Rumble. Anyway, what's happening? Why just look for yourself? The shaking affected the whole universe, making some planets fear for their destruction, and other primitive ones think it was a holy sign. No matter what, if they continued, someone was going to have to pay a hefty price. Goku was on the losing end. He couldn't see himself winning in a normal battle. Maybe in a battle of stamina with Senzu Beans. But such a prolonged battle didn't sit right with him. Why would Byu send him here? To kill the rest of the Saiyans. He should know that Yamashi won't be able to do it. Then why? He knew something was up, and now was unsure if he regrets moving to a different location, seeing the cracks on the surface of the planet. He might just have to try it, the oldest trick in the book. One so shameless yet important tactic that Roshi invented himself for situations like these. Look, it's your brother, King Vegeta. What were? Goku's pointed finger quickly turned into a fist that caved in Yamashi's jawline. Hearing a crack, he felt bad but couldn't do anything about it. Seeing the legendary figure slump after that KO shot, that feeling of anxiousness, increased at how much easier he thought knocking Yamashi was than he thought. Putting his fingers up to his forehead to travel back to Earth, he strangely found out he couldn't move it. A grip so tight Goku's arm turned purple nearly instantly landed on his teleportation hand. Looking down, he saw a furious Yamashi with purple energy leaking out of him like water. Breathe in, then out. 
You feel the rage inside wanted to burst out and destroy everything. Don't just push it down inside the back of your mind, shove it down the deep abyss. No matter how slow the latter is to the alternative, it will be better in the long run. I understand what you are saying. Become a monk filled with tranquility and our celibacy. Feeling a pair of hot eyes on him he quickly changed it. I mean patience and virtue and our porn mags. The more he spoke the more he was digging himself. So he took the wise decision and just stopped. Kale, however, found it more than amusing inside this routinely boring training session. He, stop making me laugh. Breathe in then. Out. The rage. I can feel it simmer down. For some reason, it has been a lot easier since Broly showed up. The two legendary Super Saiyans were meditating while in their Super Saiyan form. Shortly after Broly showed up, they both achieved the hard-earned achievement. It wasn't as if their talent were any less than Cauliflower or even Goku. It was just the condition of their transformation was naturally harder. The two legendary Super Saiyans had some sort of synchronization that training just that much easier. Of course, Shilai was a bit jealous that Broly spent so much time with Kel training. But it wasn't like she was going to stop them. She just kept on watching from the control room through the mirror. Sipping on some specially made drink by Chichi. She was reading a book as well to integrate more into Earth culture. Perhaps that was the reason why she didn't notice Bu into the training grounds. That or you could barely see him. Collapsed onto the floor to look like spilt liquid, coupled with an invisibility spell to boot. He was able to easily go inside the control room and two looked inside the glass without Chilai noticing. Feeling the power that the two gave in waves, it was as if he was hit with pure ecstasy. Such raw power, such raw potential, he just wanted to gobble it all if the drool on his mouth didn't give it away. Going under the door like water, he was slowly approaching the behind of the closest target. Kale's sweaty back was easily exposed for Bu to see. Broly eyes shot up in seconds and scanned a room. He looked behind Kale intensely multiple times before scratching his head in confusion. Kale opened up one eyelid along with its eyebrow to question Broly. Something wrong Broly. And nothing I Broly shook his head and got right back to meditation. Maybe it was the rage trying to cloud his senses or maybe the constant paranoia that he attained when facing dangerous situations. Dangerous situations wouldn't exist soon as long as he trained hard. He wasn't doing this training for himself but for the people around him. Bu was sweating bullets after the intense stare down by Broly. Bu averted his eyes down in fear that Broly's senses would alert him more. He could have confidence in fighting an enraged legendary Super Saiyan, as he could trick them, but two sane ones are out of his league. Bu furrowed his imaginative brows and scuttled in the corner. He needed to wait for the perfect opportunity until he acted. He could tell Broly was more alert, and decided to wait it out a little bit longer. Waiting was in his portfolio after all. Another Senzu down the drain. I don't have much left. Yamashi was going crazy with a purple aura swirling around him like an evil entity. Ever since he got this boost everything about him multiplied. With no visible strain on his body, Goku was at a disadvantage right away again. Yamashi came crashing down after he ate that senzu bean, but Goku flipped out of the way. Bouncing on the ground like a ball, he torpedoed towards Goku, forcing him to stretch out his arms and stop his push. Hands met and they clasped each other before Goku started sliding back several feet. Eventually, Goku stopped kicking dirt up revealing Yumoshi with several veins protruding from his forehead. What the heck are you doing? Doping. You know that is illegal right? I don't know what you joke about. But that Bu was right when telling me I would use this against you. Bu gave that to you. But where is your Majin Mark? Don't tell me if you need to console anything to me, just say it. I've seen too many Daojin to know where this is headed. Get your head out of your fantasies. I didn't take any marks. That Bu did some sort of magical spell or something. Told me that it will boost me more than the Majin Mark, but will I will turn weak afterward. Oh, thanks for telling me. Not like you will live to see it. Goku's hands started to bend down in the contest of strength. Soon he was kneeling on one knee trying to hold on. Sparks of lightning started to course around Goku, with his appearance turning more feral. But that instantly vanished as fast as it came. Dang it. True Super Saiyan isn't as easy to combine with Ape, like regular Super Saiyan is but I have to keep trying. Goku did everything he had to combine the two transformations to get the power boost he needed. He did it so much and so desperately that his Kai started to spiral crazily. 
and any semblance of control was thrown out the window. H H H H. Screaming to the sky you could see Goku's transformation turning more and more into an ape. Markings on his face became more accentuated, and his eyes started to gloss over. It would seem he finally broken through and became something more. If only, his eyes turned a bright red, the same way great apes do. His struggling and human vocal cords started to become more and more primitive and desperate. The wildness took over Goku's body, and he bit into Yamashi's forearm. Hard, like trying to tear meat from the bone. He tried to let go of the hole. But Goku wanted to clasp his hands not letting go. Before a portion of his arm went down Goku's throat, he kicked the stomach of the kneeling man, making him release his teeth. He inwardly celebrated that he didn't kick his face, or else the deep bite marks would be the only thing left of his arm. Yumoshi backed away and what he saw wasn't a man or even a Saiyan. It was as if the guy gave himself to the devil with the way Goku's eyes preyed on Yumoshi with his arms out ready to smash. Yuo, pounding his chest, the original Goku was long gone, replaced with this Madden version. Jumping up towards Yumoshi with leg strength that no one can compete in a million leg days. Yem so he wondered how gravity was pulling him down so fast. Not wanting to get crushed, he disappeared from that spot into one ten meters away. Goku landing on the ground rumbled the planet and created a web with a crater at the center. He tried to make out the silhouette standing up inside the dirt that blew up, but regretted it instantly. Those red eyes that stared him down, made him freeze in his tracks. Rows of sharp teeth for chomping meat were shown as he opened his mouth. Exhaling, steam exited his mouth from the excitement that was boiling in his body. Like the ape he was, he jumped again making the crater bigger, and was ready to come down and smash that ancient Saiyan to a pulp. What do you want to do now Broly? Kale and Broly were just finishing up their training as they wiped the sweat off their bodies. Not too sure, Broly kept up his vigilance throughout the whole training session, but it turned out to be for naught. He trusted his instinct that has helped him numerous times over the dangerous years. Yet it seemed as if the peace affected him more than he thought. Finally you guys are done. Let's go out and have some fun. Chiyalai was an exuberant bundle of joy who just wanted to get out of this cramped space, waiting for them to finish. She snatched the book she was reading, and they all headed towards the bathroom to shower. Ah, I forgot it. That ear thing. Yeah, I remember you going inside the training facility with it. You really never leave without it, huh? You two girls go on ahead, I'll catch up quickly. They nodded their heads and retreated inside the house. Broly walked down the paved road a few meters before arriving at the training grounds once again. Opening the door, he scanned his vision across the room once more. After finding nothing again, he shook his head at his silliness. Going over to the rack where he left his green ear that he usually wears around his waist, he thought that the rack looked a little peculiar. He stared at the rack for a couple of seconds. The rack didn't move at all. Broly didn't know what to expect from the rack staring at it like that. He grabbed his ear, but when he pulled, it didn't budge. Thinking it got stuck, he tried to look at it from a different angle to pull it from. That was when pink goo-like bubblegum stretched out from the rack and latched onto his body. His eyes widened in surprise before trying to pull the sticky substance from his arm. It just wouldn't get away from him sticking to him like glue on a mousetrap catching its prey. He didn't so much as to hesitate and turn Super Saiyan. Being a famed legendary Super Saiyan, when he transformed, his figure buffed up more than his original big size. His hair turned yellow while his eyes pupils disappeared turning completely white. Despite this, he maintained more or less control and desperately tried to pull himself out of this sticky situation. But it was like the rack instead of cowering, waited for this moment. The entire rack turned pink and in no time Incus Broly in an impromptu sphere. Realizing the severity of the situation he pulled even stronger gaining some unknown force. Eventually, he was able to pull himself out of the initial grab, but it was too late. His entire body was already covered in the sphere, with only one gap remaining for him to see through. I would tell myself I told you. Those were his last words before the pink sphere closed in and created a ball. It was as if Broly disappeared, melted from the physical space that he occupied. The sphere turned into a tightly formed ball. The ball continuously morphed and jutted up like it was being stretched from the inside. The ball glowed a little before it started to take form. Instead of Broly, 
The pink alien took his form, exposing his torso and up with pure muscle with plain training clothes cover his legs. Accompanying his waist was the precious ear Broly dotted on. It looked exactly like it did before like it wasn't absorbed at all. That feels nice. Yu was admiring his new powers, and even started to flex his muscles all over the place. He was able to go to the house and look for an opportunity there, but who knew they would come to him? They fell into his lap and no doubt he would capitalize on it. He looked at the muscles adorning his body and mused. They were merely for decoration as his body was naturally mushy with or without muscles. Thankfully, he only took the good powers, and not the simple mind that Broly had. Broly, you good in there? We are waiting out here. What's taking so long? He heard what he came to know as Chilai from outside the facility. It seemed as if she was about to come in. No matter. She was so weak that killing her or absorbing her was inconsequential. No, I want a tastier meal. His red eyes glinted before he sneaked through the back by melting once more. Chilai opened the door to the training grounds and looked around. She couldn't have missed him even if he hid with that big body. So where was he? Broly, what the hell are you? A rabid animal. Yamashi was fighting against a creature that relied on pure instinct. This although couldn't really be called a transformation, definitely proved to get the upper hand in the exchange. On his road to further improving Super Ape, he stumbled upon this ape variant. This variant contains not only the slick and figure and power of a super ape, but tapped into the unbridled rage that was hidden within. When using the ape transformation, it was all about staying calm. In any situation, one had to stay calm in order for the transformation to stay active. It was obviously good to be calm and collected in a fight, but sometimes rage was what you needed in some situations. Unlocking this variant, he was able to increase his power several fold, without burdening his body like Kaioken, just at the cost of his rationality. A wide swing descending on Yamashi from his left, he put both of his arms to block, and as Goku's forearm connected with his defense, he felt like his arms broke from the sheer weight that was carried from that attack. He has pushed back a couple of meters again. The enraged Goku didn't relent and chased him another leap. Yamashi felt it like he was fighting an actual ape. Overwhelming. Indomitable. Fierce. He couldn't last any longer. So he had to at least snap Goku off his reverie. Or else he will be crushed under those arms. Wild Cannon. Shooting an energy blast at Goku. The latter turned his head instantly after hearing the noise, pounding his chest and screaming. The waves emitting just from that alone negated the blast. This is my last chance. Now or nothing. Yamashi took a deep breath and inflated his lungs. He then ejected all that air from his mouth in front of him. His ultimate move was to release gas. What's up guys? Omni Sensei here. Thank you dear listener for following the series so far. We've got a case of abandoned fic in our hands. The last update by the author of this fic was that he didn't feel like continuing writing this fic. That was three years ago. I was quite surprised by the interest this series generated. Maybe I should do more Dragon Ball fanfics. That's all for now. See you in the next one. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.